Game number two of three today at the University of Guelph for the 2022 Offsa Bowl Series. Pits the Holy Trinity Titans from Curtis, Ontario against the Bear Creek Kodiaks from Barrie, Ontario. Winners of the GBSSA as we welcome you inside Alumni Stadium. Jack Moore alongside Calgary Stampeders coach Dwayne Cameron and Coach Cam. Exciting game in our first matchup that saw St. Patrick win their contest and now we have a good one between holy trinity and bear creek who both ran through their schedules this year yeah both teams playing limited competition this year obviously a number of these uh, schools coming in having played in small conferences so not playing a lot of uh, you know multiple variations of uh, uh, of opponents um, but uh, two very solid teams here we got one at eight no the other one at seven and one so obviously two very successful programs looking forward to a good one this afternoon jack should be a fun game. Holy Trinity is going to kick off from left to right on your screen. Kicking it away will be Mitchell Grabank. And it's away, and Bear Creek will return from their own end of the field as they'll get up to the 35-yard line as Daniel Riley was the returner there for Bear Creek, and they will have the ball first to start today's game. So we get our first look of this Bear Creek team. Justin Cunningham, the quarterback. He wears number 12 for this unit. Yeah, and with this group here, you can look. Uh, they had a lot of success this year in the deep passing game, so we'll see if they take uh, try and take advantage of that early, especially with their inside slot backs. So we'll see them first and 10 from their own 35 left hash mark as Cunningham will toss this one off. And a run to the outside will be a gain of five as Samir Jassar on the carry for Bear Creek. Yeah, good block on the uh, on the initial edge right there. Tyler Woodall, one of those two slot backs I was just talking about. And the other aspect of their offense uh, that their their head coach feels they've uh, you know done a very good job with this year uh, is the outside run game, and we saw that right off the first play there with the toss to the weak side. So first play of the Simcoe Bull goes for five, and we'll get second and five. Second and four, check that as they mark him down on the 41. So it gets second and four coming up here for Cunningham in this Bear Creek offense. And offside is going to go against Holy Trinity, so they won't even need to run the play. They'll be able to move the sticks. Jacob Galinsky moving early on the defense. Well, we saw in the first game this morning, you know, how those, those mistakes can impact a football game very early here in the first couple minutes, but you really got to limit the mistakes. You're playing a high quality opponent here, Holy Trinity is in Bear Creek, a team that's gone undefeated. They don't need you to give them any extra advantages. You're going to have to be on point, not in terms of your assignment, also your discipline and making sure you don't take any penalties. So we'll see a first and 10 from their own 46 yard line after the penalty to Holy Trinity. They'll send the receivers in motion. Cunningham back to pass. Justin Cunningham will roll out of the pocket, get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gain two yards, so second and eight upcoming as Holy Trinity rallies to the ball. Yeah, and you saw they dropped back trying to get into that pass game right there, and he didn't like the picture that he saw in terms of what the defense was giving him, felt the receivers were covered, made the wide decision to pull it down. You see he does some, has some elusiveness, some ability to move around, extend the play, and for Bear Creek, what a great situation. This is his rookie season as a quarterback. They're going to be, you know, they're in a great spot here for the next couple of years with this young man at the helm. And really running through their schedule this year, you look at their last three games, 43-3, to 25-2, to 20-3. to So they put up points offensively, but they don't give up much on the defensive side of the ball as Daniel Riley to the outside gets hit hard. And that'll be a flag coming down from the safety spot was Jalen Connell. But the flag comes out, and we'll see what the flag is after a gain of one would bring up third and seven. Yeah, I think they're gonna call. They're gonna call him for launching himself here. I'm not sure. It didn't look to me on the high on the replay right there or live when he initially did it that he hit him in the head. Um, you know, I'm not sure I agree with the call there. Nonetheless, they have made it. We see them trying to work the outside, and we saw that a lot in the first game as well too, with a lot of the jet sweep trying to get out onto the perimeter uh, and use your speed right there. Bear Creek trying to take advantage of that, and that's now two defensive penalties we've seen now for Trinity already in this first drive. Jalen Connell, who calls the plays defensively for this Holy Trinity Titans team. One of just three teams in the Lhasa Conference this year, really running through their schedule, won their conference title game 51-6, to as Cunningham will roll out of the pocket to his left, and he'll be tracked down. A great job by the Holy Trinity defense. Ryan Travis hauling down the Bear Creek quarterback behind the line of scrimmage. 
getting some help from Ethan Gregorich, and those are the two guys that Holy Trinity wanted us to focus on when they're on the defensive side of the ball. Those are the guys who are going to get it done. Yeah, and you see why right away. You see the pursuit there to the outside, the speed and the physical ability to finish on the edge with the quarterback escaping and getting out of the pocket. Right, And that's going to be a key here today, being able to keep him between the tackles, not let him get out and be able to do damage with his feet. So another second and long coming up here for Bear Creek. Holy Trinity had them stopped on their last second and long, but a penalty against Holy Trinity extended the drive. Cunningham, left-handed quarterback, fires and it falls incomplete. Tyler Woodall couldn't haul it in. And now Bear Creek in a punting situation at third and 11 from the Holy Trinity 48-yard line. Well, disappointing if they're for Woodall, obviously, and the uh... – you know, in the Bear Creek team, that's a ball that he's got to have. That was well-placed football right in his hands. The thing is, is he let it get through to his body. Uh, and I, I feel like there's a chance he may have bounced off his face mask. But you got to go out, extend your hands, extend your arms, go out and catch that ball away from your body so you don't have an opportunity for it to bounce off your, off your equipment. Miles Kagan back deep to return, as well as Ty Ali for this Holy Trinity team. So Bear Creek set to punt this one away, and it will be Tyler Woodall. No, sorry, that's Daniel Riley to punt it. And this one will go to Miles Kagan. But they'll let it roll, and Kagan picks it up. No flag for no yards. He'll get it up to his 25, and that's where Holy Trinity and Mason LeJoie will start this drive. Well, I feel like the no yards there was uh, the defender was actually standing out of bounds standing out of bounds so he's not actually in the field to play I'm not sure specifically if that's a if that's a rule not a scenario I've seen a whole lot of but I think that's why the flag wasn't thrown there one thing I did notice on that punt is, is that was a slow high snap if I'm holy trinity and I see that that's what their long snaps are like Jack next time we got punt return on we're gonna go for block so holy trinity's offense comes onto the field averaging 46 points per game in regular season play including their Loss a championship win over O'Neal as Ty Ali bounces it to the outside. Nowhere to go. He drives himself forward. He'll maybe get two, so it's second and eight upcoming. Yeah, we'll see how they're able to function in the second and long uh, environment right here. Um, a play looked very similar to, uh, to a young man that we recruited to Wilfred Laurier was running back, Brady Lonehart. And uh, with that deep motion in coming from the backfield in there, in there to take the football. So I recognized that right away, even though I hadn't seen it in about probably four or five years. Randy Lonehart, a member of the Golden Hawks unit now. Older brother was a stud offensive lineman for this Holy Trinity team through his years with the school as LeJoie lines up second and eight. He'll drop back to pass over the middle. That one's caught by Gregorich, and he breaks away from defenders. He's down the middle of the field. Gregorich will go to the end zone. Touchdown! Ethan Gregorich, a long touchdown for Holy Trinity, and they strike on their first drive of the game. Well, that's the second 83-yard touchdown pass we've seen on second and long today. Uh, first one of this game, but I'll tell you what, impressive throw. Take a look at the replay here. Hits the receiver, perfect timing, right in stride, right on the numbers, and it now allows Gregorius just to go to work. And you see the size, size and speed combination that he presents specifically for this high school level is very, very difficult for those players to be able to match. He's got the speed to run away. He's got the size to break tackles. That's going to be a tough matchup for Bear Creek all day. So Holy Trinity on second and long. Makes Bear Creek pay as the extra point upcoming. It's up and good. Tristan Smith, the extra point. And it's 7-0 Holy Trinity. So a good start for this Holy Trinity offense who scored at will in the regular season. They did have one exhibition game against Huron Heights back on October 27th. That was their first real competition against a team that plays at the level that they expected to see at Offsa, and probably a turning point for this team. We know we have to pick it up after losing that one, 44 to six. Well, that's a challenge. You come into this game if if you haven't, you know, if you haven't faced adversity throughout the course of the season for a long period of time, you're never quite sure how your players are going to manage it when they when they're forced into those situations. Uh, very strong start here for Holy Trinity. They can run the football. They can pass the football. And then when you've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup individual like a Gregorich, you can pretty much do whatever you want with that young guy. Saw a number of universities here in between the first game and this game. 
and I'm sure a lot of them have him pegged high on their list to talk to after this one's over. Every school in the country would want to have that young man in their program if they could. And it's not just OUA schools that are making the trip to Guelph. It's teams from all over the country. There's teams coming from out west. St. Mary's from the AUS is out here as well. These are young men who, if they have good days, they have some good film, they could be recruited to go just about anywhere in the country. And Ethan Gregorich gets the ver first big play of the game. So this one will be returned by Daniel Riley. And he'll bring it up across the 35, up to the 40, a flag on the play. So we'll get that sorted out, and Bear Creek and Justin Cunningham will come back onto the field. Yeah, I assume that's kind of in the area you anticipate you're going to see some type of hole illegal or illegal block in the back on the return there, something that we see quite common. But uh, Bear Creek, no reason to panic. You've got some talent here. Obviously, you've got a good quarterback. You've got a strong uh, vertical passing game yourself. So um, no need to change the game plan. Obviously, you just want to be a little bit more successful, get the quarterback um, from having to, to roll out and try and create with his feet, be able to stand in the pocket cleanly uh, and hit his targets. So Bear Creek took the penalty. It's a 10-yard penalty. We'll start them on their own 30-yard line. So Justin Cunningham, the rookie quarterback for this Kodiaks team, back onto the field. And we'll see his unit go to work. First and 10. Cunningham will hand this one off inside. And Elliot Barber will get the carry for a gain of six yards and a second and four. Yeah, it looked like there was a bit of a missed assignment there. He ended up with two defenders in the same gap on the outside. That weak side B gap opened up wide open for Barber there right there. You're probably a little bit disappointed. You'll see it here in the replay. You see both the defensive end and the blitzing linebacker end up outside the tackle. Somebody's got to be in that B gap. So whether the linebacker is supposed to blitz into the B, whether the defensive end should, uh, should loop down into the B, you can't have both of them off the edge. You open up those big interior gaps that way. This one will be a toss to Armand Zamani. It was behind him. He corrals it. And Ethan Gregorich right there to make the tackle for Holy Trinity. A loss of five. And third and nine coming up here for the Bear Creek Kodiaks. Yeah, Zamani never, really never really had a chance there. The timing uh, of that pitch was just off and the placement of it. He actually did a good job of making sure that that wasn't a, a turnover. That's a live football there in the lateral. So... Uh, you know, a bit of a shaky start here for Bear Creek. We've seen the drop pass uh, and the first drive right there by Woodall. We saw the, uh, you know, we just saw the uh, the ill-advised toss there or the the toss that didn't, uh, didn't get to its intended target in the right place right there. Bear Creek's got some things to shore up here. So Daniel Riley to punt this one away from his own 12. As a high punt will bounce at the 51. Ty Ali will pick it up at his own 48. Ty Ali will step out of bounds at the 52, and Holy Trinity, after a long touchdown pass from Mason LeJoie to Ethan Gregorich, is back on the field for their second drive of the game. Yeah, and if you're Bear Creek here, I mean, obviously the worry is, you know, they were able to score quickly on that first drive with Gregorich and the explosion play right there, but, um, you know, you've had your own struggles offensively here in the beginning, and there's obviously plenty of time to get that worked out, but you don't want to fall down two scores early. Uh, against a team that has the firepower that this Holy Trinity team does. So this is a big defensive series for Bear Creek. Favorable field positioning for Holy Trinity as well. So they'll start from their own 52, just three yards away from plus territory. George Zinnis, the running back, is LeJoie under center. And he'll hand this one off. Gregorich has a hole up the middle. He'll drive up to the 50-yard line. A gain of eight will bring up second and two. Well, Bear Creek linebacker right there. It looked like uh, Elliot Barber was blitzing into that strong side B gap, but they ran the counter power right back towards it. Fortunately, in that situation, Bear Creek's outnumbered in terms of having enough to defenders for all the blockers that are coming from the weak side uh, for Holy Trinity. They're able to get the solid gain on first down run. So Holy Trinity second and two from the plus 50-yard line. And... A little bit of a delay here as Bear Creek needs to make a late substitution. Well, I assume it's probably something to do with whether he doesn't have a mouth guard in or whether he's got blood on his uniform or something because he was lined up and set and ready to go, so there'd be no other reason to take him out. So Mason LeJoie under center. He hands off to Ty Ali. His blocker's in front of him. Gets the edge. He'll pick up a first down and get forced out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Bear Creek making the tackle was Hunter Kett. 
Yeah, going under center, just going with that fly sweep from that under center quarterback position right there. Only needed two yards for the first down. You see the acceleration speed there of Ali. He's able to gain the edge on the outside and, and move the chains again. So first and 10 from the Bear Creek 45. This is this Holy Trinity offense. Lines up under center on the right hash. Kagan takes the handoff, tries a jet sweep, gets forced back inside, but makes a few cuts, has some room, but he'll only gain about four yards. He went about 40 yards to get four, and a late flag flies on the near side of the field. So we'll see what the flag is. Yeah, the initial play there was made by 94 Klusterman. You'll see him here get upfield on the replay, get upfield and force the runner back inside. Now, he, you know, after that initial block, it looked like he was, he was going to be able to pick up more than he actually did. Good solid pursuit there by, uh, by Bear Creek. It looked like uh, Jaden Josiah, Mark Wigston, amongst others, limit the gain. But unfortunately, they also, you know, got called for the, for the face mask there, finishing that play. And, and for Bear Creek, things are just going from bad to a little bit worse. Another solid drive here for, uh, for Holy Trinity in the early going of this first quarter. Four and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Holy Trinity with a 7-0 lead over Bear Creek in the Simcoe Bowl. Guelph Alumni Stadium on the campus of the University of Guelph as Mason Lajoie lines up in shotgun. Drops back to pass, looks to his right. He'll be forced out of the pocket but gets taken down, wrapped up by Anthony Clivney. And that'll be a loss the first time we've seen Holy Trinity lose yards on an offensive play today. Yeah, and if you're Bear Creek, you needed that, right? They're playing man coverage in the back end, solid coverage. Quarterback doesn't see anything available. He's forced to hold on to the ball a little bit longer than he would have liked to in that situation, Jack. That allowed that front, that you, you know, those guys that you talked about to get in there for the sack. Now, you're Bear Creek. You've put them behind the stick. Second and extra long here, second and 16. You've got to manage this situation and be able to get your defense off the field without giving up first down. Second and 16, Holy Trinity goes under center. Lots of motion, and Ethan Gregorich takes the handoff. Flag flies, and they blow the play dead, so that one doesn't count. And they'll reset, and they'll sort out this penalty before Holy Trinity will have a second down. It is against the Titans, so it's second and 21 now for Holy Trinity. So after the sack, they take false start penalty and be forced back to the Bear Creek 37-yard line. Yeah, their third their third penalty already here in the first quarter, and, you know, that one hurts them. It puts them into second and 21, I think, as you mentioned there. So, you know, the, the fly sweeps, the jet sweeps, play action are kind of out of the playbook. Now it's just straight drop back pass. Mason Gregorich under center. Or, sorry, that is Mason Lejoie. He fires a dart over the middle, and it's caught. Driving forward <clears throat> and close to the original line of scrimmage. It will be a third down here for Holy Trinity, but a great catch there by Tucker Pinnett. You had a good job, Daniel Riley there on the tackle. They played quarters coverage, so four deep, two deep players to the field, two deep players to the boundary. They gave up the intermediate throw in the dig, which you're willing to do on second and 21. It just becomes a matter of do we rally and tackle, and they were successful at that. And uh, look like they're going to be able to uh, look like they're going to be able to force a field goal attempt here. Another beautifully thrown ball by Mason Lajoie, who's looked good passing it in the early going of this first quarter. But you're right, it is going to be a field goal attempt coming up here for Holy Trinity as Tristan Smith on to attempt the 31-yarder. Down the middle of the field. Wind at his back. Ball is up and no good. It goes under the crossbar. So Bear Creek will return this from the back of the end zone. And Hunter Tom will be tackled in the end zone. So a single point for Holy Trinity, not the points they were hoping to get, but it still results in a rouge. No, you're Bear Creek. You're happy with the ultimate outcome and result. You're Holy Trinity. You saw you had first down inside the, inside the green zone, inside the red zone there. And so to come away with just a single, you got to be disappointed with that. <clears throat> that play specifically right there, you and I both know at the high school level, the execution of field goal operation from snap to hold to kick, it's not easy. That was an example right there. Relatively, uh, relatively benign distance on the field goal, but they were unsuccessful. Only get the single out of it. Now, if you're Bear Creek, you got to make something happen here. We got to at least pick up, a, a, pick up a couple first downs, be able to feel competent, gain some confidence on our offense, and try and flip this field. Cunningham back on the field, first and ten from his own 35. 
And he'll hand this one off. So trying to pick up yardage on the jet sweep for Bear Creek. And Tyler Woodall breaks away from defenders. Inside Holy Trinity territory. Finally gets taken down by Tucker Pinnett. But he's inside the red zone on one play for the Bear Creek Kodiaks. Yeah, and there's that explosiveness they talked about. They like to be able to run the football to the outside. Well, this is a, this is an example of being able to get out on the perimeter. They ran the jet sweep. It was actually a very good initial play of stringing this out by Anthony Dillon, the defensive back from Holy Trinity. He was the one that actually turned Woodall back inside, but Woodall found a seam. The backside pursuit wasn't there, and he get the explosion gain. Great job by Tucker Pinner to save him the touchdown at the end. Great backside pursuit, like you said, and Holy Trinity saves a touchdown, but first and 10 from their 19 for the Bear Creek Kodiaks as Cunningham back in shotgun. He'll keep it himself. Cunningham off to his right, and he's being strung out by Ty Ali. Good tackling corner for the Holy Trinity Titans, and that's going to be a loss maybe two or three yards for Bear Creek. Yeah, good discipline and recognition. Take a look right here, Ali. Make sure that he doesn't get pinned down inside by the slot back on the block. Maintains his outside leverage. Keeping that outside arm and leg free so that they can't seal him down inside and allow the runner to get outside. And He was able to string that play out and uh, force the loss. So it's going to be second and 14 here with under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter for the Bear Creek Kodiaks. From the Holy Trinity, 23-yard line right hash, Justin Cunningham in shotgun. Drop back to pass. Southpaw quarterback steps up in the pocket, faces pressure to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown! Bear Creek responds with a touchdown of their own and a beautifully thrown ball by Justin Cunningham to Elliott Barber. Gets the Kodiaks on the board. Yeah, fantastic job, as you mentioned. Cunningham hanging in the pocket under duress. You see they're coming with pressure off the weak side edge right here. He steps up into the face of that rush, knowing he's going to get hit, and throws a perfectly placed pass to Barber, who goes up, high points the ball because the defensive back is closing quickly. He high points the ball, goes up and gets it as high as he possibly can before the DB arrives. There's your touchdown. Elliott Barber trying to convert on the seven-point play. Flag on the play. Extra point is good. We'll await what the call is. And it might be against Holy Trinity. The I way assume everyone's it's probably offside, but we don't know. It looks like the referee from the near side is pointing towards Bear Creek. It is against Holy Trinity, so probably applied on the kickoff there. Yeah. And... Bear Creek able to pull back within one, so Elliot Barber with the rare seven-point play. Well, and, and you see just how important having quarterback, solid quarterback play is, right? Holy Trinity makes their score. They go down. You're able to hold them, but then you're able to fight back. You know what I mean? You're able to just continue to be able to, to maintain your balanced offense. You, you're not in a panic situation because you know you have a quarterback that can execute in the air game. You're not just a one-dimensional offense that runs the football. You've been around Canadian football, university football for a, a long time. I've seen university football for the last 20 years, and there are kids who play on Saturdays on this field in the fall who don't step up in the pocket like Justin Cunningham just did. No, that was impressive. And as the thing I said at the top of the uh, at the top of the game, the top of the broadcast, this is rookie year, right? Bear Creek's in a great situation for this young man, but he's going to start getting recruited early, Jack. The recruiting process on that young man is going to be way in advance based on what schools are going to see him do today. Daniel Riley kicks this one off, and Ty Ali will return from his own 19. Crosses the 30-yard line and drives up to the 34, so Holy Trinity – with more good field positioning on a 15-yard return from Ty Ali. Well, and Holy Cross, or sorry, Holy Trinity here coming out. And uh, you have to anticipate that uh, Gregorsik is just, he's going to continue to just be a part of this offense, run the football with him. We saw on the, on the one second along there that got blown dead, they were going to run the jet sweep with him. So it's really just about, for them, it's about getting the ball in the hands of their best players and letting them do things with it. And when you're as big and as fast as he is, that's an easy game plan. Final play of the first quarter, barring a penalty. They'll hand it off up the middle. Not much there, maybe a gain of three for Holy Trinity. We'll bring up second and seven on the run from Miles Kagan. 
And that will end the first quarter. Holy Trinity up 8-7. to seven. Bear Creek responds. Elliott Barber with the touchdown catch from Justin Cunningham. And we'll be back with the second quarter after this. Holy Trinity second and seven from their own 37-yard line to start this second quarter as Mason LeJoie drops back to pass, throws out to the far side of the field, and that one is caught. Magnolia makes the catch, and that will be right at the line to gain. This one will be close, so we will see how they mark it. I think they're going to give it to him. They ran a flood concept there to the field, Jack. All three receivers ran outside breaking routes. The number one and number three receivers ran both outs, and the number two ran a corner route, and they were able to out leverage uh, out leverage the uh, the defensive back to the sideline there uh, on the on the outside out route, and he was able to pick up the first down. Mason Lejoie from the left hash throwing that to the wide side of the field. That's a long throw. It is a long throw. It's a long throw, but it's also a dangerous throw. And if it's not thrown on time, oftentimes you see it going the other way for a touchdown. So it was a good execution by Lejoie. It was actually Evan James on the reception there as LeJoie drops back to pass first and 10. He rolls to his left. LeJoie looking downfield, fires it off, and that one is caught. Miles Kagan makes the catch inside Kodiak territory down at the 49-yard line. We're seeing elite-level quarterback play by both sides. They ran a wheel route concept here. Uh, they ran Gregorich on the, on the wheel, and it wasn't open. Uh, both defensive backs were over the top on that. The play was able to be successful because it got extended. Quarter got back out outside of the pocket on the rollout uh, with the receiver working back to the sideline, getting, getting himself open, helping his quarterback out there. But high-level quarterback play we're seeing so far from both cues in this team. That's another throw. Rolling off to your left, getting your feet set as a right-handed quarterback. Not easy. As Lajoie hands it off to Gr Gregorich up the middle, and he'll pick up seven, six maybe, and it will be second and medium here for Holy Trinity. Yeah, and you can, you know, he's such a, a physical mismatch. You can line him up in the backfield. You can line him up at tight end. You can play him in the slot. He's bigger than everybody, right? And, uh, you know, you get him inside against those linebackers and those defensive linemen, he's faster than them. And so it's just a challenge to have to play against a young man like this. You see it at all levels. You see those athletically gifted players who just make the difference because of their size and speed and Kagan will get the handoff and bounce it to the outside can he get away from defenders he does down the sideline Miles Kagan forced out of bounds inside the 15. Well disappointing right there initially I believe it was Klusterman that had a chance to stop this at the line of scrimmage and then after that I think Owen Hayes had an opportunity you see you see Klusterman right there and you see Hayes right there uh, put his head down. wasn't really a strong tackle attempt, and he was able to get outside of both of those. Uh, disappointing if you're Bear Creek. You had an opportunity twice to get that stop for little to no gain, and it turned into an explosion run, which is which obviously which you're always trying to avoid. Gain of 34 yards on the play for Miles Kagan. Out at the 15. Yard line, first and 10 for Holy Trinity. Gregorich gets the handoff, driving forward down to the nine. Gain of six will bring up second and four. Yeah, and this is the third consecutive drive that we've seen them able to have offensive success. Bear Creek really yet to stop this, stop this team. In the previous drive, it was Holy Trinity that stopped themselves with penalties on consecutive plays that took them out of, uh, took them out of the red zone. So they're going to have to figure out a way here pretty soon, Bear Creek. Uh, you don't want to have to get into a shootout, right? You don't want this to turn into a basketball game where it's just, you know, scores back and forth from end to end. Bear Creek's going to have to figure out a way to get a stop. Mason LeJoie lines up under center for Holy Trinity. Second and four from the Bear Creek nine-yard line. LeJoie hands it off to Gregorich. Has a hole. He'll get down to the one and be taken down. So 
Bear Creek unable to get the stop on second down and force a third down, but they don't allow Gregorich to get into the end zone. It'll be first and goal from the one. Yeah, he looks like he's limping a little bit. I'm not sure what uh, whether he got rolled up on there or twisted his ankle when he planned to change direction, but he appears to be favoring that uh, uh, that ankle a little bit, but big tough guy. I'm sure he's going to be okay. I expect something to just go straight ahead here uh, from Holy Trinity, whether it's a quarterback keeper, whether it's a Gregorich or the tailback coming in from deep here. Lejoie under center. He'll drive himself forward, and he didn't get it. He's short of the goal line, so it'll be second and goal from the one, and Bear Creek calling for a flag. They got one on the near side, and it looked like Holy Trinity moved early. Yeah, they may have, and it didn't look as if the uh, whether he got the snap uh, cleanly there right away. There appeared to be a bit of a, a pause before he went forward. Um, this is the area of the field where you often see defensive offside. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's what we're getting call-wise, but, I mean, you see that all the time in Canadian football uh, down down on that one-yard line down there. The defenders, they just got to be disciplined. You got to make it. When the ball's on the one-yard line, you literally use the goal line as your line of scrimmage, right? There's no excuse to be offside. You got a solid line that goes all the way across. Everybody's got to be behind it. Mason Lejoie under center, first and goal after that was defensive offside. Lejoie hands it off. Gregorich to the end zone. Touchdown! Second of the game, this time it's on the ground for Ethan Gregorich. And Holy Trinity back in the end zone. Yeah, that's pretty easy, right? Just give it to the big guy and just let him jump over top of everybody. It's not a, you know, it's not a, it's not a big scheme or a, a well-designed play. It's pretty simple. We're just going to give it to our big dude and let him jump over everybody. And uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, if you're Bear Creek, you're going to have to figure out a way here. You don't want to get into a, uh, you don't want to get into a track meet with this offense. Tristan Smith on to attempt the extra point. Ball is up and good. So Holy Trinity up 15 to seven. Two offensive possessions, two Ethan Gregorich touchdowns. Yeah, two touchdowns on on uh, on the I guess three possessions three actually. Possessions, yeah, two yeah. possessions, and they were. But I guess my point was is they were well on their way to to having a touchdown on that second possession too. But they you know their their own errors. Uh, taking back-to-back -back penalties took them out of the opportunity to do so. And so uh, for Bear Creek right now, you know, obviously you've got uber-talented players uh, in Woodall Barber you got and Riley. you got an outstanding quarterback in Cunningham. So you're never out of this game. But as I said, you don't want to have to turn it into a track meet where you're forced to score every possession just to keep up. So we saw them respond. Can they do it again here? After Justin Cunningham found Elliott Barber for the touchdown. You know, something I'm really, I, I'm really happy about, Jack, it's November 27th. We don't have any snow on the ground. It's not minus 10. And so the conditions are such that we're able to see a skillfully played game. We're able to see successful passing. We're able to see guys running with the ball, not slipping and falling in the snow. Um, I mean, this time of year, obviously, you're going to face elements in Canada. It's just it is what it is. But for these young men to be able to have an opportunity to play in this facility with this weather and really showcase their skills, I think is fantastic. So Bear Creek will field this one down at their own 18, and just falling on it was Sultan Warwich. So well, that's the second time that they haven't fielded a kick clean. The missed field goal, obviously, they weren't able to. Uh, they weren't able to catch in the air. They're not able to catch the kickoff return in the air. Uh, and those are small things that may go unnoticed, but there's lost yards involved in that, right? And so whether you're talking about 10 yards or 15 yards of potential field position, uh, or maybe you break the return and it goes all the way for a touchdown, we'll never know. Uh, but even if you're talking about the little you know, 10 to 15 yard averages that you would normally get on returns, those add up over the course of a game. So first and 10 from their own 19 yard line for the Bear Creek Kodiaks. Down by eight with seven and a half to go in the first half. 15-7, Holy Trinity leads. Cunningham in the gun. He'll drop back to pass. Steps up, fires, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Tucker Pinnett. And there is a flag on the field. Yeah, that's going to be offside. It looked like number 54, the weak side linebacker, coming off the edge there. Uh, Jacob Galinsky was a little bit early, so that's going to be a freebie for Bear Creek. So that is the call. So Cunningham was looking down the seam, but almost intercepted, but they get saved by the offside against Holy Trinity. So first and five from their own 24-yard line for Bear Creek now. 
As Cunningham lines up in shotgun. High snap corralled by Cunningham. Hands it off to Elliott Barber, and he'll drive forward. He'll pick up a first down on the gain of eight yards. So Bear Creek gets a strong run there from Elliott Barber, who has the touchdown catch. Yeah, and if you're Bear, if you're Bear Creek right now, I think you know going on the ground and trying to trying to sustain drives by going six and seven and eight yard chunks. You know, not only is it, is it advantageous for you, but it's keeping that Holy Trinity offense off the field. And so they may want to, you know, start to incorporate that run game in there a little bit more, assuming that they're able to stay successful with it uh, to kind of keep Holy Trinity's offense on the bench. Our man Zamani, the running back. Cunningham rolls off to his left. Justin Cunningham trying to get away from G Gregorich, who takes him down at the 34. So a gain of two will bring up second and eight. Well, and Cunningham probably outruns anyone else if it's anyone other than Gregorich on the end. But, uh, you know, I can't help but think of like a, a Rob Gronkowski or something when I'm looking at this guy, you know, with the size, the weight, the speed, all of those things put in there together. Uh, I mean, there isn't anything that he's not able to do for this team. We've seen him made a play right there on defense. We've made him seen plays running the football. We've seen him catch the football so far. Um, so he's uh, he's a good one in this one for sure. Even look at Canadian University football, David Dallaire, what he did as a fullback for Laval the last two weeks on route to a national championship. Just that multifaceted athlete. Intercept. No, in and out of the hands of the Holy Trinity defender as Cunningham was rolling off to his left. Unable to make the catch there was Anthony Dillon in and out of his hands, and it's third and eight. Bear Creek will have to punt this one away. Yeah, so um, Bear Creek went with a, what we would refer to as a mesh concept, it's just multiple crossing routes at a low level right there. You run those when you're anticipating man-to-man -man coverage. He was under pressure and duress, but that was, I mean, that was a really ill-advised throw right there. They're fortunate that that wasn't intercepted. And if it is and he's not on the ground, it's a walk into the end zone touchdown right there. So Cunningham's got to be careful with some of his decision-making here. Sometimes it's better to just take the sack or throw it away. High snap. Back to Daniel Riley, but he has enough time to get this one away with the wind at his back. Bounces inside the 45 and will go out at the 36-yard line. So Holy Trinity will start in their own end with middling field position, but have a chance to extend that lead. That's 15-7 to seven right now over Bear Creek, who stalls out on that last offensive drive. Yeah, Bear Creek's got to get a stop here. Got to get a stop. Don't want to go down by two full scores, uh, right? Holy Trinity doesn't seem to matter where they're taking over their possessions. They can strike on the ground. They can strike in the air. Um, so you got to get a stop here if you're Bear Creek. you got to make a couple calls here as a defensive coordinator to help your guys get off the field. Mason LeJoie lines up under center. First and 10 from his own 36. Handoff, and Kagan lost the football, and it's recovered by the Kodiaks. Driving into Holy Trinity territory. Preston Cole with the fumble recovery. Yeah, no, that's not exactly what I was talking about when I was talking about getting the stop, but that certainly works. You know what I mean? So you see they initially empty out the backfield so that they can overload the front side to run this jet sweep right here. But Bear Creek does a great job of penetrating and getting up the field beyond those blockers, and then the ball slips out, and Cole somehow is able to come up with it, almost scores on the play. And so kind of a catastrophic situation for Holy Trinity right there, Bear Creek excellent opportunity to get yourself uh, right back within uh, right back within one score in this game driving Ty Ali who's the boundary halfback for Holy Trinity back down to his own 13 as this handoff up the middle will go to Elliot Barber he'll drive forward inside the five taken down one yard short of the line to gain second and one so they can pick up yards without getting a touchdown to get a fresh set of downs here for Bear Creek but they've got their eyes set on the end zone here on this drive after starting with favorable field positioning. Yeah, absolutely, and Barber really displaying some power there, running through the attempted arm tackles, dragging a couple defenders for extra yards there, second and short. This is really a free play right here at second and one, Jack. You might Sometimes we refer to it as a waste down. You know what, you're willing to, to run a trick play, you're willing to run some kind of play action pass right here, understanding that if you get the third down, it's a simple quarterback sneak just to extend the drive anyway. So. Don't be surprised if we see a little bit of trickery from Bear Creek on second and one. Holy Trinity calls a timeout, trying to slow things down a little bit after 
Their defense got a stop, but Miles Kagan dropped the football, and Preston Cole with the recovery and the drive down to the Holy Trinity 13 before that last run by Elliott Barber got them a nine-yard gain. So Bear Creek just getting some of that momentum back that felt like it stalled out when they had their offensive drive stall out with a punt. Yeah, and, and stall out is probably the best way to put it. You know, you weren't sure. Uh, you know, you kind of felt like, you know, they, they weren't able to capitalize and build off of, of that score where Holy Trinity just it seemed like every time they got the football, they were just kind of grinding away at things. And so to, to kind of get this turnover and get things going the other way uh, and be able to get it in a situation where it's essentially automatic points here, barring any kind of catastrophic situation where you fumble the ball, you're at least coming out of here with points at this point in time, having the ball down inside the five-yard line. Uh, but as I said, Bear Creek, or you mentioned a moment ago, Bear Creek, they're going for the touchdown here. They're trying to get this within one point, uh, you know, and kind of keep pace with this Holy Trinity offense. Second and one from the Holy Trinity four-yard line for Bear Creek. As Justin Cunningham will line up under center, and this will be a quarterback sneak. He'll pick up the first down, go down at the two. So first and goal upcoming for Bear Creek. All right, so no tricks whatsoever. Just quarterback under center, keep it, just go straight ahead. I'd be surprised if they if they do anything other than that, just continuing forward. Just you know, you got you got a good athletic size quarterback right there uh, in Cunningham. Just let him go under center and just plow straight ahead. Holy Trinity bringing some big guys onto the field for the goal line defense. They mark him down at the one. So first and goal from the one yard line for Bear Creek. Cunningham in shotgun. He's back there with Samir Jassar. He'll hand off to Jassar and they will lose a yard. A flag does fly. So we'll wait the call here from the officials, but yeah, I'm I'm just I'm not a fan of the quarterback shotgun on the one yard line. I just I'm just not. I'm never going to be. I feel like offensive coordinators outsmart themselves uh, oftentimes with that. It just takes longer for a play to develop when you do it that way, right? You know, offside against Holy Trinity, so it doesn't matter on the loss. It's first and goal from the one yard line. And the referee explaining to the Holy Trinity defensive line, it's the helmet that you put your hand on the goal line, but if your helmet's in the neutral zone. See, and what needs to happen there is the end players on the line of scrimmage, depending on you know what the formation is offensively, it'll be different people. They need to make sure that everybody inside is behind. They can look down the line and see if anybody's ahead. They say, hey, you need to get back, get back, get back, get back. So Cunningham under center, driving forward, and he... Didn't get it. They'll spot him shy of the goal line, so this will be second and goal from the one. Well, you talked a minute ago that uh, Holy Trinity had brought some bigger body types in uh, on the goal line, and it, it is to stop that specifically. And obviously then they got Gregorich on the inside who's, you know, he's going to be difficult to handle himself. But for me, I just go three straight quarterback sneaks in a row. You're not going to stop us all three times. So Bear Creek will bring in some bigger bodies as well as there's a timeout on the field. Second and goal coming up here for Bear Creek. And yeah, I think Cunningham was just too high. He took the snap and was too high. He was standing straight up. He just needs to make sure he gets that foot behind him so that he can drive forward, keep your shoulder pads, your hip level low, don't expose your chest, and just push forward behind that line. And the same thing with the offensive line. They need to make sure they fire out and are able to undercut those defensive linemen. So you get into this situation. Obviously, you still have to score the touchdown. And I know it's early in the game. We're still... 307 away from halftime but is this a, a spot in the game where if, if you're a game manager a head coach you're thinking about if we get this we should probably go for two to try and get the game back to even to level the, the balance or take the points while you can get it i think i'd take the points at this point right now i think i'd just take the points kick the extra point still have to score cunningham under center He'll toss it off to his left, and that will be stopped short of the goal line. Tyler Woodall on the carry, but a good rally by the Holy Trinity defense. Third and goal from the one. Yeah, again, you know, I mean, they're under center, but any kind of any kind of play that goes outside is longer to develop, slower to develop. Great run force on the outside. I mean, that was a physical finish. We saw him take a shot earlier in the game. Jalen Connolly took the penalty on. Right, but that young man will fly around and throw his body in there. That's he's certainly given up a little bit of size to the running back right there, but he's not he's not showing any fear. Cunningham under center. He'll toss it to his left. Flags fly. And tried the to toss to 
one of the big guys in Cameron Shalou. You know what? They it took is. a penalty, but I'm going to tell you right now, they're fortunate that penalty was called because that was not that play was not getting anywhere near the end zone had it stayed live right there. Uh, they were fortunate that Cameron Shalou just hang on to the ball and he didn't put it on the ground right there. Uh, you're in a situation third and six where you got to decide to kick the field goal or go for it on third down, and it's probably a pass play. It looks like they're getting ready to kick the field goal to take the points. Yeah, they got the field goal puck coming onto the field. You're first and one on the one-yard line. You're first and one on the one-yard line, and you're now kicking a field goal from the six. There's no way that Bear Creek can feel good about how this possession ended up. If you're a Holy Trinity, when you turn the football over in your own red zone, this is a huge win for the Holy Trinity defense. Elliot Barber on to attempt the 11-yard field goal. It is good. But like you said, points left on the board. First and goal from the one-yard line. Started the drive on the Holy Trinity 13, but unable to punch it in. So the Holy Trinity Titans have to feel good about how their defense stood up at the goal line. Yeah, absolutely, right? You have the turnover in your own end. Uh, and just the effort from the Holy Trinity offensive players after the ball was turned over to prevent the run-in from the touchdown because Cole was on his way to score at that point in time. Their effort saved four points because ultimately the defense was able to stop uh, stop Bear Creek from getting the touchdown. So Holy Trinity will start from their own 35. 2.46 to go in the first half. 15-10 Holy Trinity leads. Bear Creek was knocking on the door and Holy Trinity answered and kicked them out. The Titans, now if they can put some points on the board here to end the first half, that would be a huge momentum swing. Yeah, and the clock's not an issue at 2.46. You just run your offense, right? There's, there's plenty of time there. You got timeouts left, so the clock's not an issue at all. You're just coming out running your offense based on what you feel is going to be successful. There's no sense of urgency here. You don't have to go hurry up or, or uh, speed up to the line of scrimmage. You just go ahead and call your plays. Mason LeJuan, shotgun. Offense goes in motion, and the handoff will go to Kagan, so they go right back to him after he fumbled. His He's last hurt. carry, and he lost four yards on the play. Yeah, no, that was fantastic. Emmanuel Brody Menz, I believe, shot through. He came completely unblocked through the interior right there. You see him flash right now, and he goes and makes a tackle. I really did think there was a chance there that Kagan was going to be hurt just the way the – just the way Brody Menz uh, kind of fell on his feet there on that tackle attempt, but fortunately he got back up. So it was a loss of five, bring up second and 15 here for Holy Trinity. From their own 30-yard line right hash, Mason LeJoy in shotgun. Three receivers to his right, that's where he looks. He'll fire this one out, and it's caught by Kagan! He gets across midfield and down to the Bear Creek 49-yard line. Daniel Riley makes the tackle, but when they needed a big play... Mason LeJoie goes to Miles Kagan, and it's first down Holy Trinity in Bear Creek territory. Well, they ran a similar 373 flood concept in the boundary, two outs in the corner route. You see Kagan on the corner route right there. He's the most vertical of the three receivers, and I'm not even sure if initially he thought the ball was going to come to him because he had kind of stopped running. Uh, disappointing. Bear Creek had defensive backs in the area, but none of them were able to make a play on the football right there. So, you know, you get them backed up second and 15, you're thinking, okay, now we're going to try and score before the end of the half. But unfortunately, Bear Creek, defensively, they can't get it done. First and 10 from the Bear Creek 50. As LeJoie drops back, he'll swing it out near side, and that falls incomplete. He's looking for George Zinnis, and it'll be second and 10 for Holy Trinity. Yeah, they kind of ran a wheel stop with two curls there, and when none of those routes were open, the, the swing pass to the running back is kind of the check down option late right there, and unfortunately the accuracy on the throw wasn't quite there, and they're not able to complete it. The other thing that does for Bear Creek is that stops the clock here for you. So if you're able to stop them on second down, you're going to save a little bit of time for your own drive. Second and 10 here for Holy Trinity from the Bear Creek 50. 149 to go in the first half and a five-point Titan lead over the Kodiaks. 2022 Simcoe Bull, Jack Moore, Dwayne Cameron with you. As this handoff will go to Gregor Gregorich, and he'll drive forward to the 40, and he got the first down. Yeah, it, it's, man, right at right at the, the beginning of the play there. I didn't see what the number was, but there was a defensive lineman that had a chance right there if he just squeezes that. 
and is able to make a body tackle. The arm tackle, this kid's too big. You're not going to arm tackle him. You're not going to bring him down with one arm. So you've got to get your shoulders and head across his body. Had a chance to stop him right there, but Bregorich able to, to extend the play, get enough for a first down. He's just got to be careful of extending that football out at the sticks, exposing it. Defender comes in and punches that out. That's a turnover. They've already lost one uh, on a drive in this quarter. You don't want to lose a second one. Mason LeJoie goes under center, first and 10 from the 40. After Ethan Gregorich picked up the first down, now he'll lead block as a jet sweep goes to Grebnik, and he'll just get back to the original, or sorry, Grebank, as he just gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and he's in some pain on the near sideline after going hard into the six. Yes, yeah, take a look at it here. I'm not quite sure what it is. It almost looks like he's kind of grabbing. Uh, Maybe in his groin area. I'm not sure. It didn't look like he twisted a knee or anything, but he couldn't get up right away. Uh, he's in a lot of pain. He's taking his helmet off. He's he is in a lot of pain right now, uh, but it wasn't glaringly aware. Now he's holding his hip, so I'm wondering whether or not you know there's a potential, maybe a slight dislocation in the hip or something there, just based on the way he he planted his foot on the ground and twisted as he went down. That's the second time they've tried to run that play recently. The last time they tried to run it was when Bear Creek actually forced the turnover. So they're not having a lot of success. They're bringing the slot backs and the running back up on the strong side edge to create a four receiver surface early to have multiple blockers. And we actually, he looks like he's okay. He's jogging off the field right now. So that's a good sign for us. But, um, and then bringing that backside uh, slot around on the sweep in order to try and outgain numbers on the outside edge. But Bear Creek's done well stopping it both times. So now a second and long here, second and 11. They say Grabank lost a yard. He goes off to the sideline for Holy Trinity. I need to, we need to see a defensive call here that gets, gets, his, gets his team off the field here. Defense corner's got to make a call to get his group off the field. Five receiver set, LeJoie to Gregorich, and that goes off his hand and falls incomplete. So we'll see third and 11, and decision time here for Holy Trinity. I well, imagine they'd want to... Or should punt the football. Yeah, and Holy Trinity's lucky there. That ball actually gets tipped, and Daniel Riley right there for it, right there for it. Just didn't recognize it uh, uh, quick enough that the ball had gotten tipped. He wasn't able to stick his foot in the ground and drive and catch it, but uh, you're fortunate you're Holy Trinity there, right there. That ball gets tipped in the middle of the field, and Bear Creek almost came down with it. Holy Trinity takes a timeout. Mason Lejoie over on the sideline talking it over with his coaching staff. So interesting decision. You're going into the win, so you'd imagine the field goal – is off the table, and especially from the 41, it would be about a 48-yard field goal. Well, I'll tell you what. 116 left. You're already in their end at this point in time, but it's third and 11. I'm punting the football away and counting on my defense to not allow them to have a 100-yard drive. The flip side to that is you're already in their end. There's only a minute left on the clock. Even if you're short, you're still going to count on your defense. But me, I really think that difference in the 30 to 35-yard field position, whether you punt or go for it and don't get it, to me that's significant with this amount of time on the clock. The way we've seen Ethan Gregorich play, do you just try and put him one-on-one -on -one to one side of the field or the other and throw a deep bomb? Even if it gets intercepted, it could be just as good as a punt. Absolutely. Well, I assume. I'm assuming here. But in some way, shape, or form, if they're going for it, Gregorich is involved in the play. He's the slot back to the near side of the field. Third and 11, Mason Lejoie in shotgun. He looks to his left. That's where Gregorich is. He'll go there, but it's caught. And that's going to be a first down for Holy Trinity. It wasn't Gregorich. They threw it to Tucker Pinnett, and he takes the first down at the 22. So Holy Trinity converts. Yeah, it was actually a great catch here. Look at the traffic. It actually looked through it went, it went through the hands of a defensive back and somehow got there. That's the second time now Bear Creek has had defensive backs in that short side boundary in a position to be able to make a play on the football, and they haven't been able to do so. They were certainly counting on Gregorich getting the ball. They were playing a defender underneath in man coverage with help over the top, but fantastic catch by Pennant to come down and extend the drive. First and 10 from the 22 for Holy Trinity. Ty Ali takes the handoff. He'll drive forward up to the 18. So a gain of four will bring up second and six with 49 seconds to go in the first half. Excellent tackle there. Anthony Klibney, you'll just see here on the highlights or on the replay here, just slicing down the line of scrimmage, coming down, bending down off the edge, making that tackle right there, bringing it up second and six. Under 50 seconds to go here now. The clock's running. Lajoie under center, hands it off Gregorich, bounces it outside, but good gang tackle there. And getting in there first was Martin Klusterman. 
So we'll get a third down here for Holy Trinity. Yeah, Kalusterman's had a good first half. We've called his name here a few times. So, again, it's decision-making time. Your Holy Trinity looks like they're going to go for it. If you go for it the first time, you may as well go for it the second time. I mean, it's only six yards this time as opposed to 11. But we've seen now it's that you don't just have to th count on where Grigorich is. You've got to know where other guys are as well, too, because they will go to their other players. Joa fires this one out, and it falls incomplete. So a turnover on downs. Unable to make the catch was Dane Hurley. It was a low throw to him, but he was open down there on the far sideline. Yeah, he was, and for sure, that's that's one that uh, Lejoie is going to want to have back because he underthrew the receiver right there. He was open. The corner had played very conservatively far off. It was just a stop route on the sideline. It was an easy move to stick first down, but he underthrew it. So Bear Creek takes over. They have 26 seconds. And then this is where you get into the conversation, how conservative does your play calling get? Well, I think you run a play on first down here, and if you get any kind of significant yardage, then you continue forward. If you don't get anything significant here on first down, then you just run the clock out. Yeah, they'll hand this one off to Elliot Barber, and he'll drive forward across the 25 to the 26-yard line. So a gain of eight will bring up second and two. Only five seconds coming off the clock. Yeah, I think uh, Bear Creek is – they're going to be happy just to go into, into halftime with the score as it is. So after their last drive, unable to convert with a touchdown, they settled for a field goal. They will wind this out before they run one final play of the half. Second and two from their own 26 for Bear Creek. Cunningham drops back to pass, and he's winding up for the far side, and that's going to fall incomplete. Making a play was Tristan Wright on it. He was the only one in the area, and that could have been bad if Holy Trinity intercepted it and took it the other way, but it's 15-10 for Holy Trinity at the half. Bear Creek probably thinks they, they should be closer in this game, if not tied, because of that missed chance on the goal line, but Holy Trinity as a whole has to feel pretty good about that first half. Yeah, I mean, if you're Bear Creek, it's, you know, I mean, it's kind of 50-50 how you feel right now. Yeah, you should have had uh, four more points. You definitely should have got the touchdown first and goal down on the one-yard line down there. It's inexcusable to just come away with a field goal. you got to find a way to execute better. Uh, at the same time, in the first quarter, they weren't doing anything to stop this Holy Trinity offense. So from the flip side to it, they're happy how they're, hey, they kind of flipped the script defensively. They're now slowing Holy Trinity down a little bit. At the same time, they got to find a way to score some more points on their offense. 15-10, Holy Trinity leads Bear Creek in the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. We'll be back in 15 minutes for the second half from Alumni Stadium in Guelph.
Welcome back for the second half of the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. Holy Trinity Titans leading the Bear Creek Kodiaks 15 to 10. As we welcome you back to Alumni Stadium at the University of Guelph, Jack Moore, Dwayne Cameron with you. As we will be all day today and tomorrow. And Holy Trinity will get the ball to start this second half. But of note, Bear Creek will have the ball with the wind in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that could be important. we got two evenly matched teams here with quarterbacks that can throw the football uh, and guys that can, can go and catch it. And uh, so having that wind in the fourth quarter, as long as the score is close at that point in time, could be a potential difference maker. So Holy Trinity will return this one from back in their own end, and it's Ty Ali getting across the 40 and getting up to the 46 where Mason Lajoie and this Holy Trinity offense will start back on the field. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not Holy Trinity is able to come out at the beginning of the second half like they started the game, Jack, relatively unstoppable on offense. And we'll see what kind of adjustments, if any, Bear Creek made at halftime to try and say, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do to try and take the ball out of the hands of Gregorsik and force them to go in different directions. Yeah, big first half from Ethan Gregorsik as Holy Trinity, not only offensively, but defensively showing up for this Holy Trinity team. He lines up. In the backfield is LeJoie under center, and they'll go end around to pin it, and he'll lose a yard. So second and 11 coming up here in a big play defensively from Bear Creek. Well, we saw in the first half one time when Owen Haynes wasn't able to keep the edge, and they were able to get outside of him when he had a chance to make a tackle at the line of scrimmage. This time he was disciplined, maintained his leverage, came upfield, forced the runner to turn back inside, and then just fell into the tackle. So second and 11 coming up here for Holy Trinity. They make some substitutions. Saw second and 11 late in that first half where they were able to convert on a pass to Tucker Pinnett. And LeJoie will line up under center again. Hand off to Gregorsik and a flag flies, so they blow the play dead. And it looks like this one will go against Holy Trinity. Well, this is the second time they've gone to Gregorsik in a, on a run tight play on second and extra long. So they're clearly, they're not afraid to run the football in those situations. Bear Creek came out and played a cover two shell right there. Um, they may have to, you know, continue to just play one high and bring that extra defensive back down into the box if Holy Trinity is going to continue to run the ball in what are normally passing situations. Second and 16 for Holy Trinity now. And... Might be out of that Gregorsik handoff up the middle I range. would assume at 16 yards it's probably out of handoff range, but who knows? But what we've seen from him today, who knows, yeah. is Lajoie lines up in center. Gregorsik lines up in the slot to his left. Lajoie over the middle, and that oh. should be a pass interference. I don't know how we didn't get a call there. That oh. falls incomplete. and I'm scratching my head on that one just like you, Dwayne. That Ty Ali had his right arm wrapped up. Yeah, Elliot Barber was a bit of a thief there. He was stealing. He was he was trying to pick his pocket, and he certainly did it. Uh, how the ref didn't see that, I, I have no idea. That was obvious from up here 50 yards away. So they'll punt this one away. They show the replay on the big board here in the stadium, and the Holy Trinity bench, very unhappy. Of course, the refs can't use that to throw the flag, but it seemed like as easy as it comes in terms of Pass interference calls, but Holy Trinity will have to punt this one away, and it's Miles Kagan that gets his boot under it. And this one will be returned by Daniel Riley from his own 30. Riley gets across the 40, picks up a block, turns the corner. Kagan can't make the tackle, and Riley goes out of bounds at the Holy Trinity 48. Well, Riley picked up the block late. The other returner back there, 27 Hunter Kett. The two of them were standing side by side when Riley catches the football. Once you've called who's catching that ball, the other guy needs to start blocking right now. It almost looks like they're getting ready to run a lateral, but eventually Kett works his way up into a position where he's able to, to, uh, to make a block and spring Riley for an extra 10 yards. So Daniel Riley with a big return. 33 yards on that one, and Justin Cunningham will come out for the first time in the second half. Hand it off up the middle, and this one is Elliot Barber, who drives forward up to the 40, still going forward. He'll get an extra push. He'll be about a yard short, second and one. Well, it's not the first time Bear Creek has, has run that play, and they go inside in the weak side B gap, and this is not the first time that Holy Trinity hasn't had anyone accounting for that gap. They've got two defenders coming off the edge and nobody inside in that gap, and so it's a natural, easy six, seven, eight-yard gain pickup for the running back before he's even touched more often than not. Elliot Barber will line up in the slot 
to the right of Cunningham. In shotgun, second and one. Bear Creek in Holy Trinity territory. Cunningham scrambling off to his right. Cunningham opens up and fires downfield. It's intercepted. Jalen Connell, the safety, picks off Cunningham and takes it up to the 43-yard line. Well, Jalen Connell's a playmaker. This is about the third time we've talked about him so far in this game, but I really don't understand the decision here by Cunningham. You've gotten outside of the pocket. You've beaten the defensive end of the edge. Just go ahead and keep running with the football and pick up whatever you can pick up. I don't understand this decision at all. There wasn't a receiver within an area code of that football when he came down out of the sky like that. That's, uh, man, that's a baffling decision right there. I guess, you know, it's one of those things. You know, you got a young quarterback has got a high upside. He's still not really complete yet as a decision maker. Rolling off to his right left-handed quarterback, flipping his hips, and then throwing into that wind, which has picked up a little bit here since the end of the first half. As Gregorsik will get the handoff up the middle, drive himself forward across the 50. Ethan Gregorsik picks up 10, and that will be a first down for Holy Trinity. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's like, 10 pin bowling you know you just you're throwing the ball down the alley and you just see the pins going left and right and backwards and all over the place I mean he's just so, he's such a big guy right there so I mean they can continue to just keep doing that running him between the tackles and and Bear Creek hasn't shown an ability to kind of limit his gains yet to this point in time so we could see more of that here in the second half first and 10 from their own 54 for Holy Trinity Ethan Gregorsik with a nice run there to move the sticks for this Titans offense. Hand off and nowhere to go. Zinnis was taken down in the backfield, and that's Elliot Barber making a play on the defensive side of the football. Well, Elliot Barber finished the play, but the play again is made by Owen Hayes, and this is the second time here early in this second half. Hayes has shown up on the edge. They bounce this run outside, and if he, if he doesn't make the initial contact right there, Barber's not going to make that play. Owen Hayes showing up big here in the second half on these uh, outside runs on the edge. Second and long here from their own 54 for Holy Trinity. Mason Lajoie lines up under center. 7.20 to go in the third quarter. 15-10 Holy Trinity leads Bear Creek. Gregorsik up the middle, gets tripped up, regains his footing. He'll get across the 50, and he'll be about four yards short of the line to gain. So now decision time for Holy Trinity. Yeah, you saw he was able to uh, – Anthony Clivney was able to get his hands on him initially, but uh, Gregorsik just pulling him a couple yards forward for the extra gain. Third and medium situation here. I, I mean, obviously you'd normally think this is a punting situation, but this, this group here has proven to show that they're, they're not afraid to go for it in these situations. It looks like, looks like they're going to do it again. Quarterback's under center. Mason Lajoie under center from the Bear Creek 50. Gorsick motions. He'll take the handoff and pick up the first down, driving inside the 40. He'll be marked down at the 38. So a gain of 12 when they needed four, and it's first down, Holy Trinity. Yeah, when he's lined up in the backfield like that, I almost feel like you gotta you got to commit all your resources. You know what I mean? you got to go all in on thinking that's who's getting the football right there if you're Bear Creek and just work to stop him and make somebody else beat you. I understand when he's playing receiver, they can throw to other guys, but when he's there in the backfield, they consistently show him that's where they'd like to go with the football. You've got to try and sell out to stop him. Mason Lechois under center, first and 10 from the Bear Creek 38. Handoff up the middle, and driving forward is Ty Ali. He'll gain about four yards, and it'll be second and six. There is a flag down here. It appears it's against Bear Creek. So we'll probably have a first and five here. If that is the case. And that is the case. It is offside against Bear Creek. So well, now the playbook's wide open, right? You got two yards to gain five. You know, you got sorry, you got two plays to gain five yards. You, you know, as an offensive coordinator, it's tough to be in a better situation than that on first down right here. So tough, tough for Bear Creek's defensive coordinator to know what to play call here. They could run it, they could pass it, they could run inside, they could run outside. I mean, the whole playbook's wide open to them on this play. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. First and five for Holy Trinity. As Gregorsik takes the handoff up the middle, side cuts and drives forward up to the 28-yard line. Holy Trinity wanted a horse collar tackle. That'll be close to the line to gain. Yeah, I don't, uh, 
I don't think this is, you know, it's tough to tell from here. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's a penalty. I think they got enough for the first, they got enough for the first down anyway, but it's, that's not something that I would have, I would have called. I mean, he's a big dude. You're trying to grab on to anything you can to bring that guy down, you know, and you got to bring yourself and a hundred friends with you. So it's a first and 10 for Holy Trinity as Ethan Gregorsik seems to be the great equalizer here for the Titans as they hand it off. Kagan takes it up the middle. Nowhere to go. Gain of two. So second and eight upcoming here for Holy Trinity. Okay, so great situation here if you're Bear Creek. You got him into second and extra, or sec, sorry, second and long here. Second and eight situation. All right, you got to think if. Um, you know, they've shown repeatedly on these second and long situations they're not afraid to run the football. And uh, if they're going to, Gregorsik is their guy. Now, if he's split out as a receiver, you got to think it's pass. But if he's anywhere lined up in the backfield, you got to think they're running the football. Second and eight here for Holy Trinity. Mason Lajoie under center. Handoff on the jet sweep to Ty Ali. Cuts up field. He'll get across the 20, pick up a first down. Flag on the play. And we'll see what the call is, and it's holding against Holy Trinity. So that one will get negated. They'll be pushed back. So after they were able to pick it up on the jet sweep to Ty Ali. Well, it's really the first time that they've had success with that play. They've run it twice other times. The one of them was a turnover, and the second one they got, uh, you know, they got dropped for a four-yard loss there. So they, you know, they went back to the well again, had some success with it. But part of that success was due, obviously, to that holding call. Ball we, placed on the 36. And we've seen this more than once now, where Holy Trinity is driving, they're getting it into advantageous situations, and they take a significant penalty to put themselves in second and extra long situations. Second and 18 now for Holy Trinity from the Bear Creek 36. If you're Bear Creek here, Jack, you got to play pass the whole way. Line to gain is the 18. Mason Lechois with pressure, and he goes down. Getting home for Bear Creek is Sultan Warich. And it's third and very long now for Holy Trinity. Yeah, they're out of field goal range. They're going to have to punt this right here, and it's third and forever, so there's no chance that they actually go for it. But great great uh, pressure off the backside. They kept Gregorsik in to protect in that situation. We're a little bit surprised that you keep your best player in to protect, but the pressure came from the opposite side. He didn't see it, and it was a nice, clean, easy sack. Sultan Warich coming off the edge. And Holy Trinity brings their punting unit onto the field. Miles Kagan, the punter for Holy Trinity. Kagan will boot this one away. And it will bounce at the 16-yard line and go out of bounds in the end zone. So that's a point. So that means it's 16-10 to 10 now for Holy Trinity. Yeah, disappointing there. Holy Trinity, that's the second time where they've been down inside that red zone area and, you know, come away with, you know, come away with a single. One of them was obviously on a missed, uh, missed field goal. The other one here was on, uh, you know, a punt that, uh, that, that went into the end zone. So they're not, able to, they're not able to gain the field position. I'm sure Bear Creek would gladly, <laughs> you know, give up the single point uh, to get the improved uh, field position to start in the football here in the 35-yard line. Now, Bear Creek, we've seen they're able to move the football here. Cunningham has got to show that he can manage the situation and not make a catastrophic error here. If the play is not there on a pass, don't throw it. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And timeout called by Holy Trinity. So they'll work things out. But not yeah. ideal to burn a timeout late in the third quarter. No, I'm not, I'm not sure what that's about. I don't, you know, it's a change of possession, and you're calling a timeout off a change of possession. I'm not sure what the confusion was there in that situation. Um, but not an ideal situation, obviously, for sure, for them right there. Now they, haven't put the, uh, they haven't put the single point up on the scoreboard yet, so it's still showing 15 to 10 at this point in time. Should be a rouge. Yes. Ball went out of bounds. Well, the ball's on the 35, so clearly it went into the end zone. Um, why they haven't awarded that point now? I I can't profess. There could be. There could perhaps. There could perhaps be a rule in high school football that if it goes out of the side of the end zone, it doesn't count. I don't know. 
Well, the referee who is on the near side put his single finger up in the air. All right. Well, maybe we're just slow on the scoreboard then. As a gain of eight on first down for Bear Creek. Solid gain there for the Kodiaks. So they get some yardage right away in that one. Off of Zamani. Yeah, absolutely. You get ahead of the chains here a little bit. Second and two and a half to three. Really, you can call whatever you want to here in this situation. I wouldn't do anything too wild or significant because it's really, it's it's too far of a distance than you'd want to have to go for it on third down. So just go ahead and run a solid base call that you're confident you can pick up three yards on and move the chains forward. Offside against Holy Trinity will be the call, so they won't even have to run a play to pick up the first down. No, they're not, and that's not the first time that that's happened today. And uh, you know, we we've, we've seen the uh, we've seen the linebacker there on the weak side off of that blitz, Japet Galinsky. That's the second time he's jumped offside today. So they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to work with him a little bit to time his blitz up off the wide receiver waggles. Right when you see the wide, when you see those slot backs, those inside receivers, when you see them waggling. When they're, start, when they're eight yards behind the line of scrimmage, if you're coming as a blitz player, you don't need to be up at the line of scrimmage because the ball's not about to be snapped. You want to time it up so when they hit the line of scrimmage, you're hitting the line of scrimmage. So read those inside slots to time your blitzes up. First and ten from their own 47 for Bear Creek with under 100 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Cunningham drops back to pass, looks to his left, fires incomplete. He was looking for Sultan Warich. Yeah, and Salton's not the biggest receiver, so it's a bit of a challenge right there. But they had that intermediate window open on the dig route. He broke it from the number one strong spot. He came inside and got in between the two layers of the zone right there. It was wide open, but unfortunately the ball sails high over his head. So a minute and a half left in this third quarter. 16-10, to 10, Holy Trinity. Only point coming in this third quarter was that rouge on the punt from Miles Kagan. Cunningham hands it off to Daniel Riley. Looking to bounce it outside. He broke a tackle. Riley, he'll be short of the line to gain. Maybe a yard. We'll see where the official spot is. And this might be favorable to Bear Creek. And it is. It's right at the line to gain. And it will be a first down for Bear Creek. Yeah, great job by Riley. You know, is able to get outside of the defender right there. I'm not quite sure who that was. If that was Ty Ali that wasn't able to uh, maintain his leverage and make the play borderline right there, whether you could have got the 15-yard no uh, unnecessary roughness for the hit going out of bounds by Gregorsik. The referees chose not to call it, uh, but big pickup there for, for Bear Creek. I'll tell you what, on that replay, it sure looked like he was about a yard, yard and a half short. But Bear Creek will take it on the Holy Trinity 53 Justin Cunningham in shotgun. He has Elliott Barber to his left. Barber takes the handoff, and he's met immediately in the backfield. Josh Pistrito making the tackle, and a loss of four will bring up second and 14. Yeah, big play here, Pistrito. You're going to see it on the highlight coming right up the middle. Beat the block of the center, I believe it was, and was able to make the tackle in the backfield. And so now Bear Creek playing behind the sticks. Late in this third quarter, second and long now for Bear Creek from their own 54-yard line. Cunningham drops back to pass, rolls to his left. He's got room to run. He'll take it. Cunningham will step to the sideline, and he'll be forced out of bounds at the 48, which is five yards short of the line to gain. See, and I like, I'm okay with what he did there. I understand that it's short of the first down, but when, you know, when you're watching the play develop up here in the box, you can see the receivers. There's no one open for him to throw to. So he's not missing the reads. There's no one in that short side for him to throw to. As opposed to the mistake that he made earlier where he tried to force something, he just said, hey, I'm going to manage the field position. We'll manage the game here. I'm just going to take what they give me five yards. Now, as it turns out, they're going for it anyway. So this will be the final play of the third quarter. Barring a penalty, third and five here for Bear Creek on the Holy Trinity 48. They trail by six in the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. Riley in motion. He gets the handoff. Met in the backfield. Breaks a tackle. Stays on his feet. He'll get a block from Cunningham. He turns it back the other way. 
And he can't break away from the Holy Trinity defense. It'll be a turnover on downs on the loss of four. Well, it looked bad, then it looked good, and then it looked bad again. I mean, it's an excellent effort by Riley, but the upfield penetration blows this thing up to begin with right here. He redirects, and they actually do a really good job from a blocking standpoint of redirecting and try and help go back to the other side. But you just see the pursuit from Holy Trinity able to track him down, and he's never actually able to turn his shoulders up the field and run vertically. He's got to keep running side to side. 16-10, Holy Trinity leads Bear Creek. Titans ball when we come back for the fourth quarter of the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. Holy Trinity takes over first and 10 from their own 53 after a big defensive stop on third and five. Mason Lajoie lines up under center. Gregorsik up the middle. He'll drive himself forward, and he'll be knocked down about a yard short of the line to gain. It'll be second and one here for the Titans as they have a six-point lead into the fourth quarter of the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. Yeah, I mean, it really... You know, nothing really to show from a score standpoint right there in the, uh, in the, you know, in the third quarter. Holy Trinity were able to move the football but made some mistakes. Bear Creek was able to do enough to just hold them to a single point uh, that they saw. So this beginning of the first four or five minutes of this for, uh, fourth quarter are very important right here. You're, if you're Bear Creek, you don't want to fall down by two scores to this Holy Trinity team. This one will go to Miles Kagan, and he'll drive forward. Pushing defenders back. He'll get up to the 40-yard line as he's still going. Oh, my goodness. What a heavy run from Miles Kagan, and it's a first down for Holy Trinity. Yeah, the Bear Creek corner, Preston Cole, number 40. You'll see here at the bottom of the screen, he's, he's there, and he's waiting, but he's not attacking. Essentially, unfortunately for Preston, he, in that scenario, he chose to be the, the nail as opposed to the hammer. Right, he had an opportunity to come upfield and attack Kagan and limit his gain, but he stood his ground and waited, and he had no momentum built up. And so Kagan brought his, you know, his full speed and kind of ran right through him, uh, and then was able to continue enough on to get enough for the first down. Manuel Brody mends the injured Bear Creek Kodiak at the Holy or at the Bear Creek 49-yard line. So the Titans get a bit of a timeout here. And they'll have first and 10 from the Bear Creek 39. So they take over right around midfield. And then Miles Kagan able to move things forward with a heavy run. And Brody Menz gets brought back up to his feet. And he'll limp his way off to the Bear Creek sideline. And like you mentioned, this is early, first, or early possession in the fourth quarter. But this could mean a lot to how this game plays out here on this possession, Dwayne. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, Bear Creek has had some success offensively, but they haven't been able to show – they haven't shown enough to lead me to believe that they can do it consistently. I wouldn't want to have to be in a scenario where I've got to score twice here in the fourth quarter on this Holy Trinity defense. So forcing him, forcing them to, uh, to have to punt the football here or at absolute most give up a field goal so that I don't have to score two touchdowns here later in the fourth to win it. Lajoie under center, Gregorsik up the middle. Breaks away from defenders, still driving his feet forward. And he'll get up to the 34-yard line before being taken down. So it's a gain of five, but he started breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it took a whole host of bears to, uh, to, to go get him here. One, two, we see a third one coming in right there. And there's a fourth one finally. Uh, four guys to make contact to, uh, to bring him down right there. Second you know, and five. We were talking during halftime with you know one of the one of the OUA uh, defensive coordinators uh, who's recruiting um, Gregorsik, and he said he's the best player that I've I've personally recruited in my time here uh, as a defensive coordinator in the OUA. Miles Kagan bounces it outside, flag on the play as he walks down the sideline, tiptoeing his way out of bounds at the 18. But it looks like this one will go against Holy Trinity. 
But you're absolutely right. This, Ethan Gregorsik being able to do it both sides of the football, just that big body, and, and you mentioned it earlier in the first half. He's too big for DBs. He's too fast for linebackers. Just being able to get it done on both ends, and the penalty is against Holy Trinity, so that will push them back. Yeah, and it was really an unnecessary block as well, too. The yards had already been gained. They were going to be moving the sticks. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, a mental error receiver. You know, trying to do his job, but maybe sometimes you got to make a decision. Am I trying to do too much? Am I trying to do too much? Let's just take the yards that we've got. I, mean, I don't want to push anybody in the back to gain that extra two or three yards, uh, you know, which ultimately results in, in the ball being moved back. But, you know, just the last thing here about Krigorsik, I mean, it's hard to find big, fast people. You can find big people. You can find fast people. But it's not easy to find big and fast people. He lines up at running back. That penalty came after yards were gained, so it's a first and ten for Holy Trinity. And it is Gregorsik who gets a big block and will cut it back the other way. Another flag flies. This one will be against Holy Trinity as well as Gregorsik gained seven yards on the play. But this is really this becoming a – you know, honestly, though, Jack, and I, I obviously we don't know how this game's going to finish at this point in time, but this is becoming a serious problem for Holy Trinity. They keep getting this football down inside the 25-yard line of Bear Creek, and they end up going backwards the rest of the drive because of penalties repeatedly over and over and over again. This has got to be the third or fourth time where they're going to be in a, in a, a first and second 20-plus situation. And you can't live in those on a consistent basis. You can't live in those, especially against a quality opponent like Bear Creek. Well, and this goes back to the – quality of opponents through the course of the regular season where they just didn't have anybody that can match up to their skill set and not having that ability to play somebody who's at their level and now when they're playing a team who's comparable they're having some tr trouble staying disciplined as Tucker Pinnett takes the hitch pass and he'll go down at the 43 yard line so a gain of six will bring up second and 14. Yeah, able to pick up a little bit. They just went quick game and tried to get the wide receiver screen, get it out there on the perimeter with the maximum number of blockers they possibly could. Uh, had a little bit of success. Got themselves in a little bit more manageable situation. But, again, it's second and 14. If you're Bear Creek, you're not worried about play action. You're not worried about – I mean, if they run the football with Gregorsik because he's in the box, we should be able to get down there before he's able to run the first down. Your, your key and your priority right now has got to be taking away the pass on second and 14. Mason LeJoie. In shotgun, receivers go in motion, and he'll hand this one off to Kagan. Broke a tackle initially. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe lose half a yard. But this will be third and long here for Holy Trinity, going into the wind, and will more than likely have to punt this one away. Well, and just as I say, you've got to focus on the pass. Of course, they come with another misdirection-type run. I mean, they don't. there seems to be a never-ending uh, versions of misdirection runs. Uh, but one of the challenges with those is that they take a long time to develop. And we saw one or two different fakes before the ball was finally handed off to Kagan. Uh, and it's one of those scenarios where it just takes so long to develop that the defense has kind of got a beat on it. And they weren't, able to, uh, they weren't able to muster up much with that. Hunter Tom back deep to return for Bear Creek as Kagan's punt goes to the seven-yard line. Flag flies. This will be a five-yard line. He's got an edge here. He's got an edge. He's got an edge. does have room He's on got the an near edge. side. Got Hunter Tom cuts up field, and Hunter Tom will get across to the 45 before Gregorsik forces him out of bounds at the 46. That flag that flew was a no yards penalty, but there is another flag back at the 52. Yeah, I believe I saw them signal for a legal procedure. Of course, Bear Creek's going to decline that. A legal procedure on Holy Trinity. Bear Creek's going to decline that in that situation. They're going to take the result of the play, I'm sure. Net punt of negative four yards for Holy Trinity yeah. just on the return. And again, but you, they had the ball down inside, you know, like relatively close to scoring position, and they did nothing but go backwards because of penalties. So they took their own scoring opportunity off the field, and they gave up an explosion return on the punt return. So first and ten from the 46 for Bear Creek, down by six with under eight minutes to play in the fourth quarter. You think back to that first half where they were knocking on the door and they were forced to a field goal. As Cunningham in shotgun drops back, looks over the middle. He'll fire to the near sideline. This one hanging up, and it falls incomplete. Aiden Mohall, 
the intended receiver. And Jalen Connell in coverage with Tucker Pinnett. Yeah, Connell, Connell over there as, as well as uh, Pinnett, two good football players. It's going to be tough to come down with that situation right there. You know, we talked in the pregame. They've had success throwing the ball vertically down the field. I'm not sure they're going to have that the, today against these defensive backs, especially on that, uh, especially on that weak side right there. You see – um, Ali is over there. They've got Pinnett over there. They've got Connell at free safety. I might want to try the field side. I may want to attack those field side DBs if I was Bear Creek. Bear Creek second and 10 from their own 46. Cunningham to pass again. This time he looks left. And that one is tipped and intercepted. Tristan Wright. He'll be tracked down, and he takes it to the Bear Creek 34-yard line. Okay, so here's the public service announcement. Don't attack the field side defensive backs of Holy Trinity. <laughs> Stay away from Tristan Wright. Yeah, that was great advice by uh, by the CFL defensive back coach, Dwayne Cameron. Go ahead and attack that guy. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Perf How about the timing Is on Tristan Wright, just based off what I just said? Unbelievable. Long cornerback. Yeah. Long corner. Who would recruit a guy like that? <laughs> You had a few of those guys in your time. Yeah, actually, Edward. when I saw him in warm-ups, the first thing I thought of was Shane Herbert as soon as I saw him. And, of course, you know, we had Godfrey Onyeka and Isaiah Messam, both of which play in the CFL right now. But the first thing I thought of when I saw him, and he wore number eight as well, too, which uh, Herbert wore for us at Laurier. So Holy Trinity gets the interception from Tristan Wright. And they'll be down at the Bear Creek 34-yard line as Mason Lajoie back under center. He'll hand this one off, Gregorsik. Cuts it outside, and he'll drive forward after being wrapped up by Elliot Barber. So a gain of two yards will bring up second and eight here for Holy Trinity. Yeah, and, you know, we're, we're at the time, you know, in this game right now where it's, it's, it's kind of do or die for Bear Creek defensively here. Uh, obviously, you, don't even, you can't even give up a field goal at this point in time, which is tough based on the field position that the defensive was, the defense is presented with having to start in. But you've got to find a way to get off the field without giving up any points. So Holy Trinity second and long here, second and eight with six and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter in a six-point lead over Bear Creek. Mason Lajoie under center. Gregorsik, the running back in the backfield. He'll take the handoff right up the middle with speed. Ethan Gregorsik inside the 10, and he gets taken down at the nine. It'll be first and goal. Yeah, fantastic play, and that might be the best example all day. You really see on this play, you see that size, you see that speed, and you can see why those guys in the second and third level who don't match up very well with him size-wise are not really excited about having to step in and make those tackles right there. That was probably the greatest play all day, aside from the pass that he caught and uh, the big catch and run that he had uh, in the first half. Those are the two examples right there where you just really see – why he's different than most of the other kids that we see out here playing today. First and goal from the 10 is where they spot him down. And Holy Trinity will make some late substitutions as Miles Kagan comes back into the game for the Titans. Under six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter, knocking on the door of another major. Gregorsik up the middle, and he'll take it down to the five. So we'll get about half the yardage, and Holy Trinity will have a second and goal. Yeah, you almost wonder if they're just going to put it in his hands here and just, you know, kind of have him take them home. You know what I mean? He's kind of that guy that you, you got us down here, you've carried us throughout the course of the season, and we're just going to, you know, we're going to ride that thing one more time. And he's got the two touchdowns here today for Holy Trinity as well, so why not go for the hat trick? And especially when you've seen down the stretch of this game, and, and that's what big – physical imposing running backs do to you. They wear you down. It's not necessarily what they do in the first quarter. It's the fourth quarter. Gregorsik, handoff, driving towards the goal line, and he is in for the touchdown. He's in, but there is a flag, though. There is a flag on the near side of the field. And I assume where it came from, it's going to go against, I assume it's going to go against Trinity just for a holding call. But... Uh, it wouldn't be the first time that I was incorrect. Looks like the touchdown's going to stand. It's offside. So it was the uh, side judge that threw it there, so I assumed it was, you know, a hold on the edge. But Bear Creek was offside when the ball snapped. Ethan Gregorsik, his third touchdown of the game. That's the point I was getting to, the big physical imposing running backs. They don't necessarily wear you down in the first quarter. It's 
when the team needs time of possession in the ball, they wear you down in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden 6'2", 215 gets a lot like 6'3", 250. Well, as a defender, you just get tired of you get tired of having to hit him. You get you get tired. You're like, I don't want to keep this guy's bigger than me. This guy, I don't want to go in there anymore. You know what I mean? So when they start the game, the defenders are excited and they fly in there as best they can, and then they realize, okay, this is kind of like a train. It's kind of like a train wreck. I'm getting the worst of this car accident right here. I don't want to go through the car accident again and then again and then again in the fourth quarter. They just they don't come with the same level of intensity and effort on their tackle attempts. So the extra point was good. The penalty was offside against Bear Creek once again. So it's a 13-point lead for Holy Trinity, and Bear Creek needs a spark here. In the fourth quarter, 4.35 to go. 23-10, Holy Trinity leads Bear Creek in the 2022 Simcoe Bowl from Alumni Stadium at the University of Guelph. Holy Trinity will kick this one off from their own 50 because of the offside penalty. Like I mentioned, this Bear Creek team needs a spark. Yeah, you know? and they need, it, they need it quick. They need it fast. If there isn't enough time here for them to be able to, you know, kind of grind this out first down by first down. They need chunk plays, Jack, and they need to get them quickly. Daniel Riley deep in the middle, standing on his own 20. Also back there with Sultan Warwich and Hunter Kett. As Holy Trinity will boot this one away. Grabank got hurt. Will squib it up the middle, so that will limit a big return. And Bear Creek will jump on it on their own 45-yard line. Yeah, not sure I agree with that call. There's nothing about, you know, there's really nothing about the, the kickoff return game that we've seen thus far to this point to make me afraid to kick it to those deep returners. I'm going to want to make them go as far up this field as they have to to score a touchdown. I don't want to create a short field situation, which is essentially what they've done with this squib kick. 13-point advantage for Holy Trinity is Bear Creek takes over on offense from their own 45. Justin Cunningham needs some magic here in the fourth quarter with his team down two scores. Cunningham will go to the air on first and ten. Fires off to his left, and this one is caught down the sideline. Elliot Barber, and he won't be caught on his way to the end zone. There's the magic they needed. Touchdown, Bear Creek. Yeah, and it was on the strong side, by the way. They they threw to the field successfully there. So I'm 50-50 I'm right now in terms of my prognostications. But I did say they had to score quick, right? They didn't have chance to, or they didn't uh, really have the time left on the clock to be able to kind of grind it out by first downs. They needed explosion plays. They needed chunks, and they got 65 yards. So, you know, if you're Holy Trinity, you decide we're going to kick short, squib it, and, you know, give them good field position to start with, and they make the most of it on the first play, 65 yards. More passing yards on that one play probably than they have in the entire game. Elliot Barber, who had the first touchdown, for Bear Creek, gets their second touchdown of the game. They're down by seven. And this one is no good after it was kicked right into the line. There is a flag on the play. That's probably offside. offside. They're going to kick it again. They're going to kick it again. And there is the high school field goal execution reared its ugly head once again. The snap, the hold, the kick. It's never easy at this level. We even saw it's not easy at the CFL level No, with Winnipeg struggling with it, stepping down, and it's former Laurier Golden Hawk Robbie Smith being the hero in the Grey Cup. Yeah, really happy for him. I mean, he's a great football player, but he's a fantastic young man. Really excited for Robbie. Extra point this time is chipped up and good. So Bear Creek able to get it done. And it is Elliot Barber once again converting on the seven-point play, making it a six-point game. Oh, and that extra point's big, Jack, because it's now a six-point game. A touchdown with the with the converted extra point beats you now, right? If you know if they, if uh, Tr Holy Trinity had not been offside there, then they could have given up a touchdown in the extra point, and they still would have been tied, could have forced overtime. Now a converted touchdown is going to beat you. So Holy Trinity will get the ball back here. 4:06 to go in the fourth quarter. 23-17, Holy Trinity leads Bear Creek 
in the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. Both teams with great seasons <clears throat> running through their league play and now both eyeing a Asa championship. Well, you got to start this drive out, and that starts with your kickoff coverage, right? If you're Bear Creek, you got to kick this thing deep, and you got to cover. Your guys have got to have their lane integrity. They've got to be physical at the point of attack, and they've got to make a tackle and hold Holy Trinity down deep in their own end. This one booted away by Riley. Low kick will roll all the way to the Holy Trinity. Ten, it was touched! Kagan picks it up at his own 16. So... Oh, so close to Bear Creek recovering the ball. And a late flag flies, and it looks like this will be about against Bear Creek. So after they force Holy Trinity deep, they take a flag after the play, and this will move Holy Trinity up the field. Oh, man. If this is a post-snap penalty for some type of, you know, trash talking or intimidation or something, some kind of objectionable conduct, oh, you got to be so disappointed if you're – and that's exactly what it is, right? It comes down to discipline. You executed so well. You had a fantastic kick. Holy Trinity misplayed the kick. You had about as good a situation as you could making the tackle down around the 15-yard line. And now you give them 15 extra yards after the play's over. The small things in the game, those are the difference makers. Clock inside four minutes. Holy Trinity <laughs> takes over. Mason LeJuan shotgun. 23-17, the Titans lead. I'd expect to see a heavy dose of Ethan Grigorsik, but they'll hand it off to Kagan. Kagan, two hands on the ball as he gets up to the 27-yard line. He's losing yards here. They haven't had really, other than one play, they have not had success with these wide fly sweep runs where they get four, uh, four blockers up on the strong side early. Bear Creek has consistently done a good job all day of stringing those runs out. Well, you see where they are successful offensively for Holy Trinity is Grigorsik up the middle. Not only is that the athlete carrying the ball, but it's the defense responding to those wide runs. Absolutely. I mean, right now, are like, are you, you who do you think is getting the football? Yeah, second and 11, Mason LeJoie under center. Here he is, Ethan Grigorsik. Cuts it across, lost the football! And we'll wait and see who has it. I haven't seen... I mean, they've got it a Bear, is Creek, Bear Creek, Creek football. Sports fans. So they take over on the 30-yard line. Oh, my goodness. What a finish to this football game. 2.55 to go. Bear Creek takes over, over at the Holy Trinity 31-yard line. Hey, with just a minute ago, with a, like four minutes and a few seconds left on the clock, it was a two-score lead for Holy Trinity. We thought they had kind of, you know, they kind of pulled away and they were going to be able to close this thing out. Since they've given up a 65-yard touchdown on one play, or sorry, 65-yard touchdown pass on a one-play drive, and then on their second play of their first offensive series after that, they've turned it over in their own end. This is not how you close out a football game, Jack. Holy Trinity with their backs to their own end zone. Bear Creek with the momentum. And the ball at the 31. Clock running inside three minutes. Cunningham in shotgun. Drops back to pass. Looks off to his left. That's where he'll go. Man open downfield. And it's caught. Down at the. No. Incomplete. Almost had a catch right at the goal line, but it falls incomplete. They wave it off. It'll be second and ten. Well, it's interesting. Of course, we don't have any replay or no or any cameras down in that area, so it's tough to see how this play. But the receivers open the whole way. The defensive back doesn't see the ball coming until the very last second when he gets his head back around. But it's clearly one of those situations where he just did not survive the ground with contact, or sorry, uh, did not survive contact with the ground with the football in his hands because he had both hands on it at the goal line. Incomplete, second and ten here is Daniel Riley unable to make the catch. Down at the goal line, but that would have flipped this place on its head. 2.38 to go in the football game. Bear Creek with the ball at the Holy Trinity 31. Cunningham in shotgun, drops back. He'll roll to his left. He has the edge. Cunningham stays on his feet. He needs the 20. Cunningham picks up the first down and is driven hard down to the turf. Well, they went with a 14 formation. They put four receivers in the short side of the field and then just had one wide receiver up at the top isolated. 
I'm not sure that this is the if this was designed run or not, but he you know he committed to take off pretty quickly right there. The receiver was running a fade road. I thought we might get a slant on the backside just because that corner's isolated out in space like that. But uh, great job by Cunningham. The decision not to throw it, pull it, run it, use his feet athletically. He was able to win, gain the edge, get the first down. And really right now this is an advantageous situation for Bear Creek because they're keeping possession of the football and running time off the clock. If they had have gotten that initial score right there, of course they take the lead. You're never going to turn it down the points. But that would have given Holy Trinity almost three minutes on the clock to potentially respond to it. This way, they're grinding yards out and taking time off that clock while they continue to march forward. 2.27 to go in the fourth quarter. 23-17, Holy Trinity leads Bear Creek. And when you come to the Austin Football Festival, you can't ask for a better game than what we have coming down to the wire here, Dwayne. Oh, this has been fantastic, right? And I mean, it started out well. We saw an impressive offensive drive, the opening drive by Holy Trinity. We've seen uh, you know, great plays on both sides, both offensively and defensively throughout this game. We've been thoroughly entertained. Holy Trinity Titans from Curtis, the Bear Creek Secondary School Kodiaks from Barry. In a slugfest down to the wire here. First and 10 Kodiaks from the Titans 20 yard line. Justin Cunningham on the left hash and shotgun. What a fourth quarter he's had. He steps up, he'll fire to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Just shy of the goal line, Elliot Barber couldn't haul it in. Oh, Bar Elliot, that is a walk-in touchdown. This is a great job by Cunningham, hanging in the pocket. It's not there early. He steps up, avoids the rush, makes the throw, puts it on him. Oh, that's a walk-in. That is a walk-in touchdown. Oh, Elliot, if they don't win this one, boy, he's going to be kicking himself thinking about that one for a while. Hopefully he gets another chance to redeem himself here, but... Fantastic play by Cunningham. Great throw. Tristan Wright was the defensive back right on the goal line, and Barber might have heard footsteps. Cunningham second and 10 from the Holy Trinity 20-yard line. In shotgun. Drops back to pass. Southpaw rolls to his left. Cunningham sidesteps a defender, flips it off, and it's incomplete. Almost intercepted by Holy Trinity. Oh, so close. Jalen Connell. But Jalen Connell, the safety, unable to haul it in. There's that guy again. There's that name again. Kid's making plays. He might not be the biggest guy, but I'll tell you what, he's tough, and he makes football plays. Right, Cunningham, got to be careful. Don't throw the ball late against your body across the field. Oh, gosh. Jack, it almost lost it right there. Third and 10 from the 20, 2-12 to go in the fourth quarter. Three down territory. Of course, this is being third down right here, but, you know, I mean, you're not going to kick the field goal and hope to get another possession back. You've got to go for it here. Got to go for this one. If you're Bear Creek, they need to get to the 10. Understand, you only need a first down. You don't need a touchdown here. Cunningham, lots of time. Fires! Intercepted! In and out of the hands of Sultan Lorich. And Holy Trinity gets the interception. So the Titans' defense comes up with a play when they need it the most. Oh, and the ball was caught right at the sticks. It's a great throw, Lorich. It's in his hands. Oh, I just fell down into my chair when I saw him drop it. And, of course, it wouldn't have mattered whether it was dropped or not. I mean, it was third down, right? So the drive was going to be over regardless. But, oh, Cunningham, he's put his team in position. He made that great play running the football. He's put it in his receiver's hands, back-to-back -back plays, and they weren't able to squeeze it. That's tough. Jacob Galinsky getting the interception. So we've talked about him coming off the edge, taking a few penalties. We'll make it up for it there for his defense. Absolutely did. He'll, tra he'll trade those two offsides for the pick, for and sure. Now it's about clock and ball management for Holy Trinity. Game's not over. 15-yard line. Game's not over. Fragorsic takes the handoff in the backfield. Yeah, and you see Bear Creek now. Like, they're really going to commit to this box. They know they're running the football. They know it's likely going to Gregorsic, right? And so they're really going to commit all their resources to stopping it. This game's not over here. Two minutes to go. You got your timeouts. You got them backed up in the red zone. If you can get off the field here on this second and long right now and force a punt, you're going to start with possession in, in uh, Holy Trinity's end of the field. Holy Trinity into the wind in the fourth quarter. Remember we talked about that at the start of the third quarter. Bear Creek has the wind in the fourth quarter. So that not only makes a difference in your kicking game, but against the other team. Absolutely, it does. And, and the other thing I also said with the fourth quarter is you don't want to go into that fourth quarter down two scores. You don't want to have to score twice in the fourth quarter. And unfortunately, with Bear Creek, they're having to do that. That would have been their second one right there. They weren't able to execute. But, man, this has been an exciting game. I really hope they get the football back here and get one more chance at this. The fans deserve to watch an exciting finish. We got 
solid crowds from both schools making the trip from Barry to Guelph, from Curtis to Guelph. Little bit of a haul for both teams, but nothing crazy for some of these kids, their last high school football game, some of these kids, the last football game they'll ever play right here on this field, and how does it finish in the final two minutes? Second and nine for Holy Trinity. Lejoie will go to the air. Rolls out of the pocket to his right. Lejoie looking back left. Fires, and it's complete to Kagan. Wow. Wow, big throw, Bob. And I know his name's not Bob, but I had to say something that rhymed with big throw. That was a fantastic play, right? He got out of the pocket. He was flush, rolling short side. What did I say a minute ago? Don't throw back across the field. It's dangerous, Jack, but he made it. He made it happen. Miles Kagan makes the catch. A gain of 15, first and 10 from their own 29, and get some breathing room out from behind the goal line. Yeah, again, now, hey, the clock stops in the last three minutes, plus you got a timeout left. It's not over your Bear Creek, but you can't give up one more timeout. you got to get off the field in these next two plays. Lejoie under center. Gregorsik, the running back, and he'll take the handoff. He gets met at the 30. He'll drive himself forward up to the 31. So a gain of two will bring up second and eight. Second and, and a eight. timeout for Bear Creek. Second and eight, right? The clock is stopped here. Right, you just gotta you gotta find a way to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Lejoie is athletic enough. He's got some sneaky athleticism. He can extend the plays by getting out. You gotta make sure your defensive ends are up the field far enough that they turn him back inside. Don't let him gain the edge. So we have a timeout for Bear Creek. Like you said, Dwayne, need a stop here. One twenty nine to go in the ball game. Fourth quarter. 23-17, Holy Trinity leads. It was 23-10 before that big 65-yard Elliott Barber touchdown. What a play by Barber. What an exciting comeback and finish. I'm impressed with Bear, uh, Bear Creek's resolve, right? They, they, didn't, they didn't hang their head. They didn't give it up. They didn't say, hey, there's four minutes left. We're down two scores. We can't do this. They came out and attacked. And if their receivers could have been just a little bit better at hanging on to the football, Jack, this game would be tied right now. In fact, they might be up by one. If they executed the extra point. Holy Trinity, second and long, second and eight, as Lejoie lines up in shotgun. Okay, what call do you got here to get off the field on second and long? Lejoie drops back. He looks left, rolls right. He'll fire it out for Gregorsik, who gets up to the 35, 37. He'll be two yards short. He's short. Ooh, now do you go for it here? If you're Holy Trinity, do you go for it? How much do you trust your defense? Well, you trust your defense, but more than anything else, you probably trust Gregorsik. Right, yeah. you probably trust Gregorsik. And here's the thing: they kept him in to protect there. They leaked him out late, and because because Bear Creek was playing the zone, they didn't have anybody directly related out to him when you relate when he when he came out late like that uh, out of the backfield. Looks like they're bringing maybe a punt unit in here. They are going to bring their punt unit in, but remember, Miles Kagan is the punter, and yeah. he's one of their big runners. He is. So that's the the benefit to having those athletes back as your punter. Curly Gittins Jr. in high school was a punter. I heard of that guy. Yeah, maybe once or twice. Never punted in university, I heard. No, but he returned some for touchdowns for us. <laughs> Miles Kagan back to punt, third and two for Holy Trinity. Don't hit will the boot this one Don't away. Don't hit the kicker. And it will go out of bounds. At the 42-yard line. Okay, so no return. You don't get any return off it if you're Bear Creek. But also, the fact that he kicked it out of bounds and you didn't spend 10, yard, 10 seconds trying to, you know, trying to gain five or six yards saves a little bit of time on the clock there. It's almost kind of like an extra clock stoppage for you. So, now, you got a minute. You need a touchdown, right? So, you're not, you're not going to be able to again. You're not going to be able to go five, six yards at a time. But if you're cutting him, you can't come out here and try and force things on the first play. If there's something deep that's open, it's there, that's fine. But don't force it. Manage the situation. Understand you got a full minute here. You can probably get five or six plays off in that time. They're looking for Elliot Barber, Daniel Riley, the big players for this Bear Creek offense as Justin Cunningham lines up in shotgun, first and 10 from his own 43. Playing two high safeties here. Trinity. Pass back to pass, steps up in the pocket, scrambles away. He'll run it himself and slide down for the first down. Perfectly good. Clock's going to stop. Pick up the first down at middle field. Good job by Cunningham managing the situation. They're not forcing it. Now you got to get lined up here. We don't have time for time. We don't have time to be in the huddle. Read and play calls out. You got to have you got to have the opportunity to get up on the line of scrimmage and get going here. Wow, so they 
are saying he slid down at the 53. Well, they call it based on where they start the slide. From wherever the receiver, wherever the referee determines that the quarterback started his slide. 54 was the line to gain, 53 and a half. Uh, see, the problem here with this now is they're really, I mean, it's, this is kind of a bad thing by the referee here. You're forcing them to play a second down play to pick up a half a yard in this situation. Cunningham looks to his left, fires downfield, and it is caught! He got it! Oh my goodness! He what got a it! catch! What a throw! And making up for the drop is Sultan Lawrence. Are you kidding me, Jack? He threw this over the outside shoulder, Jack. Tom Brady couldn't have put this in a better spot. Take a look at this. Look at this. You got a six-foot-one corner to have to drop that into the into the bucket over the top. Wow, that's an impressive throw right there. And I'll tell you what, aren't you feeling good for Warwick right now? Right? He, he thought, man, I lost my team the game. Heck no, you didn't. He, was he came back and made a big play. At the sticks on third down, dropped. It was intercepted by Holy Trinity. He makes the catch there. And Bear Creek, first and 10 from the 20. Cunningham fires incomplete at one hops. Ooh, that was careful, careful, careful. Right, especially with those routes where the receivers have stopped and are sat down. Right, if that throw is late to the wide side flat, oh, Jack, sometimes these turn into pick sixes. You got to be careful with those right now. I'll tell you what, they're so focused on stopping the receivers and making sure that nobody gets open right now, I'm telling you, Cunningham might have the ability to take off and run for another first down. Still 42 seconds, lots of time. Clock's not an issue at this point in time. You're already in position to be able to throw the ball into the end zone if you need to. If it's not there, take off and run. Same spot they had last time they had the ball offensively. Second and 10 from the 20. This is three down territory. You don't need a touchdown. You just need a first down. Cunningham drops back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. There he goes. There he goes. Himself. I told Justin you, Jack. Cunningham going to the goal line. And he's in. When I say down, Bear Creek. He did it. Tie the game with 32 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. He did it, Jack. He did it. He took what the defense gave him. That is incredible management of the situation right there. You didn't force anything, right? You took what the defense gave you. The opportunities to throw the ball successfully weren't there. You turned into an athlete. You scored. This is fantastic job right here. It doesn't matter. High school, college, pro. Man, that young man looks like Nathan Rourke right there. He's wearing the right number for it too, number 12. It's a fantastic job for him. So this is one of the most crucial plays well, of this game. The great thing is there's no pressure on them now because they know they can't lose the game if they don't execute this. They're at least going to get to overtime potentially. Extra but point they made up it. and good. Right. Bear Creek. Had they, had they not made the previous one, they would have had to get that one to tie. That's a little bit more pressure. When it's tied, there's a little bit less pressure. Bear Creek takes their first lead of the game. i got to be honest with you. Four minutes left. I didn't see this. I didn't see this, but wow. Where was this the first fifty four the the first uh, forty minutes of the football game? This ex offensive execution, this kind of explosion, unbelievable comeback in the fourth quarter for Bear Creek. Now, hey, but it's not over. There are yet. thirty seconds left, and I still contend whoever has the best player always has a chance. And in spite of those fantastic plays and decisions that we've seen here in the last few minutes by uh, Cunningham and the Bear Creek team. Holy Trinity still has the best player. And Did we've seen him go 87 yards already once in this game. Does he have it in himself again? He's not deep to return. He's up on the 40-yard line on the near side. That's Ethan Gregorsik. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. They have Ty Ali and Miles Kagan deep to return. Two game breakers in their own right. A lot of speed on this Holy Trinity team. Well, and again, we saw the last kickoff. Just kick this thing as far as you can. And you know what I would do here? With Jack, the wind at their back. Yeah, Jack, absolutely. I would tell him, to. I, I, we're either going to kick this thing out to the numbers or I want you to kick it right down the middle so that it creates some indecision between the two returners as to who's going to take the ball. Which one of us is going to get it? Because you put it right in the middle, you got to. they have to execute a you, 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 me, me, me call, right? Or you kick it out wide where they can't catch it in the air and they're forced to pick it up off the ground. Daniel Riley to kick this one away for Bear Creek. 32 seconds to go, 24-23. The Bear Creek Kodiaks leading the Holy Trinity Titans. Kick it deep down the field. The clock's your friend. Holy Trinity's only going to have 30 seconds. They do. It's a line drive kick. Kagan ah. takes it at his own 20. Miles Kagan breaks a tackle. Gets to the outside. Miles Kagan. Does he have the sideline? He gets forced out at the 30. 19 seconds to go. And Holy Trinity automatically 
in range to kick a field goal. I said what I said for a reason. Don't kick it directly to either one of them, right? Kick it down the middle and force them to make, some, uh, make a decision who was going to take it or kick it out to the numbers where they can't catch it in the air. We know Kagan is accomplished, can run with the football. Man, did he ever take off. That's an incredible burst down that sideline right there. But the mistake was made in terms of the decision of where they kick the football. Now, if you're Bear Creek, obviously, you don't want to give up a touchdown in this situation, right? You want to force the field goal to try and beat you. Force them to execute a field goal situation right here. The interesting thing to me will be how aggressive is Holy Trinity going to be here? Are they going to say we're already in field goal range and they're just going to rely on, on setting up for the field goal or are they going to try and score to win it? Kicking into the wind, and remember, a rouge ties the game. Love rouges. It's a good way to tie a football game, but Holy Trinity has their eyes on coming back after – being up by 13 with four minutes to go. LeJoie back to pass on first down. He'll throw to the end zone. And it's incomplete, but a pass interference coming up against Bear Creek. Yeah, the defensive back's got to turn around and look for the football. Right, he's got to turn around and look for the football. Pass intended for Dane Hurley. This is a 15-yard penalty. It's not a spot penalty because it's outside of 15 yards. Yeah. So it goes to the 17-yard line. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the thing, right? The receiver's pinned right against the sideline. You've done a really good job of, of putting him up against the sideline, giving the receiver no room to kind of to kind of fade and catch that football. Just turn your head around. Just turn your head around and look back, right? Field goal right now is 24 yards. If they don't gain another yard, field goal is 24 yards. 14 seconds left in the game. 24-23. Bear Creek leads Holy Trinity. Trinity's still going to have time for two offensive plays here. First and 10 from the 17. LeJoie rolls to his right. He'll fire out for Ty Ali, who gets out of bounds at the 12-yard line, so a gain of five. Man, that is way too easy. There is no one out there on Ali. He is running wide open. Interesting. Like you can't even see anybody in there. Here's the thing. I think you got to play with a low corner out there so he can't get out of bounds. They want to throw that route, and the corner makes the tackle right as the ball arrives and catches it. Oh, boy. 9.3 seconds. So you can stay in bounds if you're the runner, but they are going to attempt the field goal oh, they're now. They're going right now. Going right now, Jack. Interesting. They're probably, you know, there's a, that thought process that if, if something goes wrong, you'll at least have one more play if you can recover it and kick it again. Can we get the hold snap down? Can we get the hold snap, Jack? Grabank. Good! With five seconds to go in the game, Mitchell Grabank gives Holy Trinity back the lead. Man, there's been a lot of improbables in the last five minutes in this game, and we just saw another one. 30 seconds left. Oh, oh, boy, I'll tell you what, if Bear Creek could do anything, if they could do anything over in these final 30 seconds, it would be that kickoff and kicking it. Think about the injury to Mitchell Grabank earlier in the game. Yep. How in pain he looked to come onto the field and kick that field goal. And it was his hip. 19 yards yeah. to give Holy Trinity Absolutely. a two-point lead with 5.3 seconds to go in the game, and they have to kick off. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. I don't want to see either team lose this game. These two teams have just, man, they played their hearts out here. The players on both teams, they've played hard. They've executed at a really high level, especially late here in the game. We've seen some fantastic stuff. But, oh, just the decision to kick it directly to Kagan right now. If they could have one play back, I'll bet you that would be the one they would. That would be it. So they're spotting the ball here on the 35. They're not making Holy Trinity kick off. So defense on the field. Yeah, they've and, chosen to take the ball. And they've, they're in prevent defense. Rolling out is Cunningham. Breaks a tackle. He'll take it and run. Is this is the last play of the game. They need something here. That Cunningham taken down. Holy Trinity wins the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. What a finish. What a finish. You can hear the stadium announcer right now yelling it out. What a game, what a game, what a game. And he's absolutely right. Both teams deserve to win this football game. Holy Trinity ultimately will. But, man, Bear Creek's got to hold their head high. Coming back from a two-score deficit with less than five minutes to go to take the lead the way they did when they didn't get it the first time and then they got it the second time. Oh, it's exciting. You hate to see them lose it. Somebody's got to. But both teams have got to be proud of their performance here today. Holy Trinity with a 19-yard field goal to win it.
With five seconds to go, Mitchell Grabank, the hero. Think about the return from Miles Kagan, and without the three touchdowns on the ground from Ethan Gregorsik, it would have been all for naught for this Holy Trinity team. And what a comeback from Bear Creek, constructed by their quarterback, Justin Cunningham. Yeah, it was a game of comebacks by both teams here, right? We had kind of seen... Uh, you know, Holy Trinity kind of going to the, maybe they go into the tank a little bit with that great execution of Bear Creek in the final five minutes, and you thought, wow, they've really given up this game. This is going to haunt them for for a year until they get a chance to play again next year. But then they flipped the script, Kagan, on the huge return, which you know you could make the argument is the play of the game. That kick return, you can make the argument is the play of the game. Miles Kagan with the kick return down to the Bear Creek 32, and it's set up. For Holy Trinity's offense to get down to the 12, a 19-yard field goal from Mitchell Grabank. And the Holy Trinity Titans are Simcoe Bowl champions in 2022. Mark that one as an all-time game in Officer Bowl history. Oh, that was awesome. It doesn't matter what level this is, high school, college, pro. That was, that was as, as exciting as it gets right there. Fantastic finish for sure. Game two of three today. Final game will go at 5 o'clock. The Holy Trinity Titans 2022 Simcoe Bowl champions. And we'll be back with the Metro Bowl at 5 p.m. right here on Griff Vision. Presenting this year's 2022 Simcoe Bowl banner, please welcome to the field the University of Wolf football head coach, Ryan Shane. And with that, it is official, ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 Simcoe Bowl. Champions, the Holy Trinity Titans. 